Man's capacity for justice makes democracy possible. But man's inclination to injustice makes democracy necessary. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. Our topic of discussion today is the proposed anti-terrorism bill, the good, the bad and the ugly. To discuss all this and more, we've invited five guests to our studios this evening as well. Joining us this evening on the show are Dr. Vidya Saraja Paksha, Minister of Justice, Prisons Affairs and Constitutional Reforms, Farman Kasim, President's Council, Legal Secretary of the Samgajana Balavegya, Dr. Harini Amrasuri, Member of Parliament representing the NPP, Salia Perius, President's Council, former President of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, as well as Attorney at Law Nuan Bopage, representing the Frontline Socialist Party. So let's get the ball rolling today with Dr. Vijayas Rajapaksha, Minister of Justice, Prisons Affairs and Constitutional Reforms. Dr. Rajapaksha, your time starts now. I'll give you three minutes uh, for your opening remarks on this subject today. Now, as it is that we are having the Prevention of Terrorism Act that is in operation, mm. uh, since the conclusion of the war, that there were many criticism about this application of that mm. act especially because uh, the, the, that had been abused uh, by the political authorities. The, we also have come across some instances where that they have exceeded their powers in applying this uh, PTA. When we established the form that uh, uh, 2015, Yang government, uh, we took a policy decision. In fact, that there were a lot of uh, resolutions placed before the uh, UNCHR Geneva. And we had some interactions, and at that time that we took a policy decision that no need of applying that's the PTA. Instead of that, we will introduce a new law uh, with uh, some more of, uh, progressive with more progressive features uh, to ensure the democratic uh, rights and fundamental rights of the people. And with that one, uh, we we commenced to. A draft bill that was, uh, I think, completed in 2018. During that period, that we did not apply the PTA at all. In fact, that until that Easter Sunday bomb attack took place, that not a single person was arrested or taken into custody under the PTA. Uh, but with the Easter Sunday attack, that's the people were more concerned about the national security that should have been the reasons that the government did not uh, proceed beyond that. Now, with the recent change that we thought that we must uh, get that uh, counter-terrorism bill which was drafted and that was studied by the BSL and a committee was appointed consisting of 16 President's Council including Mr. Sali Piris and chaired by Mr. Sri N.C. Arsakula Ratna. And that was challenged in the Supreme Court. There is a Supreme Court determination also. Now, this time, uh, when we wanted to reintroduce it, we appointed a committee. It is completely apolitical. Uh, it was co-chaired by two eminent lawyers. One is an additional Solicitor General, Mr. Nerin Pul, the President's Counsel in the Department, Attorney General Department. The other one, Mr. And Alinda in the uh, President's Council, he's a very senior lawyer. I think he was Deputy President of the Bar Association. Uh, then, uh, together with uh, their co chairing the committee, uh, there were a few more experts on law, and they completed the draft. We also went through it, and uh, we had a uh, few interactions. That is the bill that which has been now uh, gazetted. Now, in fact, that we had placed this one in on the agenda to be presented to the parliament for the first reading on 4th of April. And there were many requests from lawyers and the opposition members uh, that is to delay because there was an intervening uh, court vacation of six weeks. Uh, that is why we did not present it. But in the meantime, that there are many more representations asking them to uh, time to consider this one as well as they want to uh, discuss this matter further. And that is the stage at the moment. Uh, 
uh, whoever who wants to have their you know that's uh, uh, that's their views to be expressed and to be discussed that uh, it is open uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Rajapaksha before we uh, move on to uh, Farman uh, who is the author of this uh, ATA in question that is what I said two names Mr. Nerin Pulle President's Council and Mr. Nalinda Indatis the co-chair together with few other lawyers uh, and representatives from the Minister of Defense Minister of uh, um, all the relevant other stakeholders, were so their police, uh, then uh, minister, uh, secretary had represented uh, by some senior lawyers in the Ministry of Defence, all were there. So it's all military personnel basically who No, are not at all. Because author, that, authoring this? No, not at all. That's co it was co-chaired so You said so? Yeah, I said so. Yeah that they, they participated but it was co-chaired and the mainly decisions were taken by those two uh, chairpersons. So there was no involvement of any politicians or you as the minister on, not the, on, at all, on this bill? Not at all. Once they completed the draft, I myself studied it that I wanted to make few adjustments that is just to improve it further and that is how that's the final draft has come out. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vidas Rajapaksha, Minister of Justice, Prison Affairs and Constitutional Reforms. I now move attention to Farman Kasim, President's Council, Legal Secretary of the SJB. Yes, I mean, like a, a, a very responsible opposition, we are not against anti-terrorism law. I have to say that at the beginning. Country needs some sort of laws to quell terrorism to a certain extent. But what we are against is the, the premise of the proposition today, which I propose to bring forward today today's discussion is that at every stage of the act or every stage of uh, a person taken into custody or detention in order that there has to be judicial supervision or judicial intervention now that is a very basic thing in our law that there has to be judicial intervention or judicial supervision because brutal laws never prevented heinous crimes but rule of law has done we have to have rule of law if we don't have rule of law we will never get over this we can talk about until the cows come home or under definitions of what terrorism is and so forth and so on. But who ultimately gives that interpretation is the person who arrests and then the person who signs a detention order. If there is no judicial process involved. Now the, the, the main contention, the main drawback of the PTA was that there was no judicial intervention. I will also now as the discussion goes along, I will draw reference to two cases which I was involved, which is the curious case of Hijaz Isbullah and also the, uh, another case in Australia, state of New South Wales versus Nizamdin, I was involved in that also, and draw reference to both those cases. That is why I say that uh, there has to be in this particular act also, the draft bill, there is no judicial intervention to, for a suspect when a detention order is issued mm -hmm. at the first instance. I will take uh, you through that uh, whole uh, amount of the law uh, as we go along. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a responsible opposition, I say once again, we have always been for the people right throughout, say starting from the agitation for the IMF and so forth in various issues. In this issue too also we will not, uh, uh, we will not object and protest for unnecessary reasons. But our main grouse here is that this, this, law, this bill as it is, is being brought to suppress the people. Why? If you take the instance of Asantamudalige, now he was put in and he's put out now. Right? Now, what is the terrorism charge against him? Now, these are all definitions that we can talk about. But if there was judicial intervention, if the court could have said that there is no charge against him, he could have been released earlier. Yeah. Luckily, the magistrate, for the first time in the country, I think, first time in our history, the magistrate is granted bail for him. So, the whole, the whole contention today and the whole contention of our party yeah. is that whatever, whatever interpretations or whatever yeah. structures that you bring in the act, from the date of arrest, Judicial supervision and judicial intervention is a must, whether it is the magistrate, whether it is the court of appeal or the Supreme Court. That is not there in the act. A judge cannot give grant bail for the first three months here. And going forward also, it's very difficult. There are bodies of review and so forth and so on, but there is no judicial intervention. So you are saying a judge cannot grant bail in the first three months? So first, you, if, he's, if a detention order is issued, the magistrate cannot grant bail. So then, what happens? Three months is enough to ruin a person's life. That's enough, right? Yeah, and and now, since the interpretations of the person who can sign the detention order and uh, uh, and and issue it and uh, uh, report facts to the to the relevant officers have increased, 
so therefore anyone having a personal a personal grudge can get get hold of the uh, police officer mm. get him to get a senior officer to sign it and then three months later you you know you can do whatever you want and get away because then where where do you go uh, in terms of that you can't go to the supreme court you can't go to the court of appeal where do you agitate your three, for the three months that is the our main grouse in this act right so only only one point uh, is so under consideration as, as, as far as the stb is concerned our whole premise is that there has to be judicial intervention as long as there is judicial intervention then we are then we, then basically ha, has uh, the stb gone through the bill of course of course yes because, in because totality because that see no no in totality in have total, you gone see, through the see, bill see we can we, as i said at the beginning we can argue till cows come home who interprets under no, the no, bill farman it's, it's not that, about that's, that's the, what i'm not saying no no the, your question is a bit yeah. uh, two faced no? whether i've gone through the bill whether yeah. the sb gone through the bill yeah. but, but i said you, uh, the sb as, as, as i said we can we can interpret we can give interpretation we can sit down this table 100 people we can give 100 interpretations there are four lawyers here if we appear 10 days we'll give 10 interpretations hmm. on those 10 particular days right so interpretations can be given so what what i'm trying to emphasize to you is also and not people watching on sir that from the first day there has to be judicial intervention judicial supervision if okay. you can't do that then the act fails and okay. fails the whole of the public right thank you very much uh, farman kasim president's council legal secretary of the sjb i now move my attention towards dr harini amar surya member of parliament representing the npp uh as the npp we are opposed to this bill in its totality uh in in fact we don't see a reason or a justification for a bill of this nature to be brought in at this time or at any time for that matter uh in that uh we have a history in this country of ex- extremely bad experiences with this kind of law uh the prevention of terrorism act came in as a temporary provision and is still there uh s- several decades later uh there was an effort uh during the hapalana regime Uh, to bring in a counter terrorism act uh, which was supposed to improve on the existing uh, pta that was uh, a bigger disaster than the uh, existing pre- pre- prevention of terrorism act and this one supersedes both those so the call uh, from our side has consistently been to repeal uh, the pta not to repeal and replace it with something else that is far worse but to repeal the pta because there is plenty of uh, evidence of how uh, bills of or acts of this nature legislation of this nature have been used by governments uh, against their critics and their opponents now we are very suspicious as to why this particular bill has come up at this particular moment with the need for it what in what context this is being uh, brought with such urgency because and i and i think if you listen to the president's speech today in parliament you get a hint as to where we are heading uh, actually if you listen to what the president has been saying the past couple of weeks you can you can get a sense of where we are heading today in parliament he said if the uh, that uh, you know there's a, there's there's a possibility of restructure of a discussion to restructure a uh, local debt and that there 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 is opposition from various groups and that some people have said that the stock market might crash and his response is let the stock market crash i will shut it down uh then and that when banks local banks uh, were critical of uh, the local uh, the, of the debt restructuring that the, i have told them then they can run the economy if they want two or three days ago a week ago i think he threatened to take away the property of university academics uh uh and to uh, take away their property right so i mean he's been he's uh, he's clearly on a on a sort of a path where he cannot tolerate criticism or dissent of any form right and this act just legalizes his intent provides a legal cover for all the things that he's been threatening to do in the last cu- couple of weeks also ever since he became president of this country this is a president with no mandate pushing through extremely unpopular uh so called reforms which are going to take the country backwards and there's a lot of resistance to this there's a lot of criticism there's a lot of dissent regarding the uh, the the path that this government has decided to take without a mandate without any consultation with people right so this is clearly this is nothing to do with national security this is nothing to do with prevention of terrorism this is simply uh an effort by the government to stifle dissent 
to, to label, categorize dissent and critique as terrorism, right? And it is, in a, it is to pro provide a legal cover mm. for the president to carry out the threats that he has been issuing in the last, uh, ever since he became president, in that he is the one who knows what is good for this country. So the NPP is of the position that the president wants to suppress the independent voices that may come up in the next seven to eight months if things go haywire as far as Sri Lanka is concerned? Our position is that this is, it is not independent voices, voices of any kind mm. that will be raised in protest against what this government is planning right. to do. And this country will go haywire. It's not if and when. It is that there will be chaos in the months to come and there will be very obvious reactions to uh, those situations and the and this is this is the uh, the government trying to uh, again legal cover uh, to prevent the uh, prevent the reactions of people against these very unpopular decisions that are going to be implemented All right thank you very much uh, dr hari namarsu a member of parliament representing the npp i now move my attention to salia peris president's council former president of the bar association of sri lanka uh, salia you were you able to read the uh, report that was issued by uh, the Bar Association of Sri Lanka today on the bill in question, which, uh, is, which is titled Report of the Special Committee to Review the Anti-Terrorism Bill? Yeah, I, I have perused it, but I, I would rather, the, that is, I, I'm, I am not speaking on behalf of the Bar Association. Not anymore? Yeah, not anymore, so right. I, I would prefer to uh, voice your concern, voice independent, concerns, independent. Uh, that's voice okay. my concern. Right. Uh, uh, so, yes, yeah. you can take so, a uh, start. My, one of my, uh, my major concern is that we am thankful to the minister that uh, he acknowledges that there's been a history of abuse of the PTA. Yeah. And I think that is the basis on which we must look at the new anti-terrorism bill. Because the PTA has been abused, not only the PTA, uh, so many other laws have, are abused, A, by certain political authorities, B, by the police and security apparatus. So, it is in the light of that that we have to look whether the anti-terrorism bill has sufficient safeguards. And my view is it does not have sufficient safeguards. And this would continue the abuse which has happened under the PTA. So, there are two things. One is the powers of detention. The Presently under the PTA, it is the Minister of Defence who can issue detention orders. Now, under the anti-terrorism bill, it is proposed to give, ha, to give the power to issue detention orders to Deputy Inspectors General of Police. There are around 30 Deputy Inspectors General of Police. So you can imagine... An active, on active duty. On active duty. Right around the country, you will have DIGs issuing detention orders. And we know that there has been a history of abuse by the police. Not only by the police. For instance, we know that during the 1980s, we have an instance, I'm sure the minister is aware, of how a particular famous singer was detained under the PTA over what was essentially a personal uh, rivalry between, uh, over, a, over a personal matter. But he was detained under the PTA. So we have a history of that. So giving the power, that power to the DIGs, is, I see it as extremely problematic. Now, I, I, I will elaborate on that as we go further. Secondly, I have a deep concern about the lack of consultation before this bill was published. Now, the, uh, the Honourable Minister says that the, it was co-chaired by uh, two President's Council, one from the AG's Department and one from the private bar. I wonder whether the Minister is able to furnish, uh, to make public the notes of the uh, notes of the that committee and whether the committee was unanimous in its recommendation my from the from the information which i have is that among the members of the committee there was a request that first the bill be shared with the draft bill be shared with the stakeholders 
So, for instance, the Bar Association, maybe others, for the civil rights activists, civil rights activists, mm. and the general public. After all, not only stakeholders, associations, but I say it should be, it should have been made public, and say this is the draft. Brought it as a white paper first. Uh, yes, mm. and then so that this can be debated upon, the good, the bad, uh, can be looked at. So, uh, so, uh, so I, I, my view is uh, that the there has been a lack of consultation uh, before this bill was published in the gazette. Right. Uh, the, the, there should have been greater consultation, and. It, I think it would be interesting if we were able to, I do not know whether it's possible, but if, if these, uh, the, uh, the committee report was made public, we will also be able to see how some of the stakeholders, even in government institutions such as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, what their views were, whether they, they were of the same view, whether there was unanimity. So, uh, so this is, I, and I of course respectfully disagree with the minister to say, when the minister says that the anti-terrorism bill is uh, similar to the counter-terrorism bill introduced earlier. I can point out two, uh, uh, two or three significant deviations which change the entire nature in which this bill, if it becomes law, can be used. And we have to look at it in the light of how the PTA was used during the last few years, especially during the last year. We know that the, the government had a moratorium on the PTA. The government assured uh, in 2021, uh, there was an assurance given. But, but Salih, this bill, if you are not aware, has been brought as a replacement for the PTA because of that moratorium that the government had promised the no. international community. Yeah, but that, that is true. But, the but this, this, is, this is worse than the PTA. Yeah. So the point is... So is, this, is this worse than the PTA? I would say certain provisions okay. are worse than the PTA. Right. So uh, we'll, leave it at that. we'll leave it at that for the moment, Salih, yes. and we'll come back to you yes. uh, momentarily when we open the Q&A session. Yes. Uh, I now move attention to uh, uh, Attorney at Law Nguan Bopage, uh, representing the Frontline Socialist Party. Now, I'll, I'll ask you a question, uh, Nguan. Now, this seems to be against organizations like the Frontline Socialist Party because it has a clause against the prescription of organizations uh, against uh, peaceful protests, that's how many individuals have defined this. So this is a direct threat to what you all are doing on the ground, isn't it? Of course, of course. Now, uh, there's no debate from the very inception. The public demand regarding the PTA is to abolish that. There was no any demand to replace the PTA with another law. Now, can we discuss about this particular act out of the context without considering the contemporary discourses can we discuss this without considering the conduct of the Rani Rajapaksha government can we analyze this act now uh, Minister Mr. Rajapaksha I heard to say that there is a committee that committee is the design and artist of this act mm. at the same time they are trying to portray the picture this has been brought by a celestial angel is a good product for the sake of the security of the country so what we have to say being reasonable prudent people in this country we know this is a reflection of the ideology or vision of Rani Rajabhasha government because without the interference of the executive suddenly even soon after the IMF deal why you brought this particular act there was no demand in the society so it is very clear after the recent Aragale, then after the IMF deal, mm. now this government, especially the Ranil Vikram Singh government, believe they, are, they want to curtail the democratic rights of the people because the reforms that they are going to implement, as Harini said, will be undemocratic, at, there is a tyranny, at the same time that affect the democratic rights of the people. So in order to meet, in order to uh, uh, oppress the masses only, this act was suddenly brought, like did by J.R. Jayavardhan in 1979. The same thing happening once again in this country. Therefore, I will go one by one, if you permits allow. There are two ulterior motives in this particular act. Number one, two, now there is a Prevention of Terrorism Act. By way of certain provisions, this particular act more draconian than the PTA. So they want to strengthen the repression under PTA. Number two, 
even implementing the provisions of PTA, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. government faced certain challenges, especially through court orders. At the same time, there were lack of provisions, as you said, to proscribe parties, to restrain the uh, activists, like that. There are certain, uh, certain challenges faced by the government. There are plenty of provisions in this uh, act to overcome those challenges made by the government during the implementation of the PTA. Therefore, there are two limbs as far as this act is concerned. One, they want to strengthen, sharpen the teeth and nails of the PTA. At the same time, they want to overcome the challenges they recently faced in implementing the PTA. Therefore, there is no doubt, without any hesitation, we can say they want to bring a draconian law. So, you can tell very smooth manner, is an innocent, this is for the sake of the public security. They did the same thing in 19, 1979. <laughs> Same thing. They in 1979, then, then minister, mm. then then minister of justice said this has this. They are going to bring this only in respect of North, but ultimately within four decades, we know how they mm. use that particular provisions. Therefore, without any hesitation, we are we, we are going to say. First of all, I have to say we need not terrorism laws. You have to abolish PTO. The general law is sufficient to meet these particular challenges regarding offences. If the issue is in respect of investigations, so that is up to the government institution to how to inefficiency and other lack of facilities only, the investigation is getting late. For, for example, if there is a heroin case, to take EQD report, it takes six months. Mm. So, innocent, even innocent suspect get affected, victimized due to these inefficiency and delays. So, investigation is concerned, executive has to take certain actions. Mm. So, as far as this act is concerned, my, my, my my, my, uh, I have to emphasize the thing that we need not to terror laws because not in Sri Lanka, the mm. minister, several occasions said France, England, even in those countries, these terror laws have been used to oppress the masses and suppress the political opponents. Therefore, we have to somehow, mm. the public to get together and defeat this particular act. But unfortunately, the public won't have an opportunity uh, unless otherwise they go to courts uh, to challenge uh, the uh, bill in question. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see how this is going to pan out in Parliament and how, how many members of Parliament would support or uh, disapprove this bill in question. Uh, so I want to open the floor for questioning. Uh, onto my immediate right is uh, Nirish Alethami, who's a senior journalist. And Robin, the attorney at law, is next to me, who is also a journalist attached to News First. So they would be posing questions to the panelists. And you also can join in with the, on, the, on the conversation. Uh, the number is not 76 656 5353. The number, once again, not 76 656 5353. And I would be delighted to take your questions to our panelists tonight. Uh, Dr. Vijayas Rajapaksa, a tough uh, task. Uh, you have four members on your left who are opposing this bill in question and most of them said this is a piece of draconian legislation. Do you think what that is thoughts? so tough? <laughs> Do you think it is so tough? I don't know. You tell me today, <laughs> Dr. Rajapaksa. I'm waiting to hear your thoughts. No, in fact, that uh, the history that as no one said, when K.W. Devanagam, then Minister of Justice, he has said that this was broad when this uh, terrorist movement, so you know, that uh, emerged in Northern East. But uh, gradually, uh, that has been, you know, spread all over the country. That's the whole country was, you know, that's under uh, the terrorism during that period, that whatever the government which was in the in, the, in power, the all the governments, they made use this uh, act. Uh, the allegation was that this has been abused. Now, when we make a law, that's we have to be really concerned about the possibility of it being abused uh, to the detriment of the people. That is true. That nobody can deny that mm. position. Now, even if you look at uh, Samir, the stake that uh, dangerous drugs act. Mm. Now, it's been abused. Now, even I am the one, in fact, who disclosed that so some police officers had. Uh, uh, send the samples to the government analysis department without uh, any uh, uh, drugs. And even recently that uh, there was a case, the Colombo High Court judge had said that the, what the Minister of Justice said was correct. 
there had been a person who had been detained for a long period uh, on the charge that uh, he had the possession of 49 grams of heroin. So, Dr. Raj Bhakshar, now you made this statement on the 17th of March 2023, which says, certain police stations are violating laws pertaining to the possession of narcotics. Now, yeah. this is your very statement. Yes. And now you're backing a act or a bill no, which I will, says... I will explain it. I will explain 50 it. 50 of the 30 DIGs that Sali was talking about would be given yeah, the I will come to that. go ahead to uh, come issue to detention orders. I know. Then, you know, that I being the Minister of Justice, I'm the one who disclosed to the people that this kind of thing's happening and I got the details station by station and I found that the uh, number of samples that had been sent to the analyst department without the, you know, that uh, dangerous substances, uh, that, that is because we'll have to correct that situation, we'll have to find some solution. Now here, with regard to this act that we'll have to concede that there were through, uh, or before that, before I come to the, those points, now we know that the uh, dangerous drugs act had been abused by the police. Just because that it has been abused, that nobody is asking us to repeal that the dangerous drugs ordinance. The, what we will have to do is that we will have to take precautions to prevent that kind of abuse. Now here also that there are three criticisms that was uh, against whatever the government in, in power. The number one was this, uh, the, the admissibility of confessional statement before the police. Under the normal law, the criminal administration of justice. Dr. Rajpah, if you don't mind, please, I just want to uh, narrow these uh, questions down so we can get some clarity. Now, you said on the 17th of March, certain police stations are violating laws per into the possession of narcotics. Yeah. Which <coughs> indirectly means that the police officers are politicized. Example, we saw the former IGP also mentioning that at least 80% uh, of the OICs that are appointed are political appointees. Yes. Now, we've heard these statements. And then you all are giving detention orders to uh, understand. No, I said that there are three points. Yeah, I want to come one by one. Yeah, Let no, me finish the yes. first important no, point. But, but just, no, no, we yeah. please, that because yeah. I, 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 unless that there will be a confusion, mm. that we have done it in a particular order, that uh, you will have to uh, take into consideration that fact also. The number one is confession. Now, under the normal law, if a confession is made to the police officer, then it is not admissible before the court that the true independent evidence that has to be proved. That is a good system, you know. All the countries have recognized that uh, this, uh, the formula. Now, here, that's the, by this present bill, uh, any confession made to the police officer is not admissible for the purpose of conviction of any suspect. It has to be a voluntary one before the judge. Then that is like in the normal course. That is one of the, the drastic change, which is for the benefit of all, everybody. And we have removed that so that nobody is, uh, you know, the complaining about that part. Then number two, the detention orders. Mm. The detention orders, if you look at in many countries, even European countries, the power is given to uh, this, uh, the Minister of Defence. Now here, uh, the DIG. Here, that's it is proposed DIG because that there were a lot of criticism and opposition uh, against the powers that has been vested in the Minister of Defence to retain this power. And that is why this committee note that we suggested, the committee has Sir, proposed... You can't, you can't compare... No, Europe please, let's... Sri Lanka no, before I, no, before I so give... Let's, let's, yeah, but let's, let's, be, let's be practical. No, you also... Now, let's, 30, let, 30 DIGs have been given, or you have said that there are malpractices and atrocities at police stations. Then, and then you're giving the police officers, the 30 DIGs, then the they, power they, to... Uh, it, it then we can, we can agree, we can have that power that to be retained by the... Uh, so defense, so defense why, not, why not make that amendment? Why not? Why, why don't you bring why? this as a white paper and discuss and then consult stakeholders as Salia said? You isn't know that the white paper, that's, I never said that. This is almost the Counterterrorism Act that was presented in 2018. 
that that's there 80%, are a lot of similar features 80%, with 80% at least 80% that's the whatever the changes that is for the that really for the, the establishment of the democratic rights that is not for the bad side that is for the good side what is the role of the military no, democracy no, but but that, but no, but no, right, right. no but but the thing is the, the way that you ask me question i i don't think that i'll be able to answer no, what is what is the role of the military no, democracy they, we wait until i finish right, okay, that's my answer okay, right, because right, that you are right, disturbing let, too much yeah dr ashwa you have to be very direct or else because we have no, you, you don't allow me to either direct or indirectly to but tell you anything. No. But you are taking a lot of time, Dr. Rajapaksa. That's that is why. That is why you have called me and that I had to reply. You yourself said that I had to oppose to poor people. No, that's uh, right. This is not a question of opposition. Yeah. Let, let allow me to uh, right, explain right. it. Okay, right. I'll give you an opportunity to discuss your. Points. Yeah, you have to give it to me. Right, otherwise, right. there's no okay. purpose. You inviting me to know. Mm. Then the question is that uh, the Minister of Defence should not be permitted to have this power to issue detention orders because he is a political figure, always it is possible that he will abuse it. And therefore this committee, you know, that I suggested, the committee has proposed that these powers to be given to the police officers. Still that this is, this is not the, you know, that uh, final act, this is the bill. That is still it is open, if there will be a, you know, the substitution, even uh, Salia said about the uh, opinion of the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, what he says is also what he, he says he cannot agree on some terms on some provisions of this bill because he says that cannot be given to the police officers that must be re retained in the hands of the Minister of Defence. Now that is a matter because we, just because the Minister of Justice present a bill, the passing of a bill is not a, a matter, matter for the uh, Minister of Justice, it is for 225 members. Therefore, that's we are having that's all the interaction with everybody in the parliament as well as outsiders. You can remember that when we I presented the 21st Amendment Bill, the, we discussed it for five months that more than 100 organizations came and gave their ideas that we were open, that whatever the group suggested that seen, they said. Dr. Rajpaksa, we have seen the manner in which how bills are tabled in parliament. Let's talk about the Port City Bill. Dr. Rajpal, where, where were you? Uh, I was, I am, the, was, I am, was I am one, of the, one of the you parties. You were absent. You, you were absent. You were not no. there in parliament when the voting took place. You know, that is the case where that I appeared against the uh, Port City Bill, Port City you Commission appeared, Bill. But I appeared know, in the Supreme Court. But we know, we all know how bills are brought in. Yes. And when there is a simple majority in parliament on the side of the government, these bills will go through. Yeah, that is why I said that I, I, there is no responsibility on my part, that there is no dereliction on my part. Whether I am in the parliament or not, that they had the majority, that is a bill that I opposed to. And I appeared in the Supreme Court against the bill. The Supreme Court gave a clearance which subject to certain amendments that they got it passed. They, they, I, there was no contribution from me. Dr. Back so, on their detention order spec, why not give the, this to the judiciary? to define this and in regard to det uh, detention orders. Just because uh, a magistrate is a person who has studied law for some time and who had pursued a career in law and he knows these in uh, laws of interpretation. But when it comes to a DIG, he can be a person with a degree on mathematics. We are allowing a DIG with zero legal knowledge to interpret a law and detain a person for three months. Why not give this to the judiciary rather than giving it to a DIG. Just to jump in there, Dr. Rajabaksa, uh, when you uh, give these wide powers to the DIGs, who are essentially police officers, you are in essence turning the country into a police state, where the DIGs have more power in that uh, first detention order, they have more power than the magistrate does, and that turns it into a police state. So don't you think uh, that aspect certainly and needs to be rescinded. Yes, that is really a matter to be addressed. Now, as it is, when the detention order is issued by the Minister of Defence for a period up to one year, that no court can even entertain any application and then, there is no judicial intervention at all. Now, in the present bill, that's the detention period for the executive, that's the police, had been confined to three months Within that three months also, when a suspect is taken into custody, within 48 hours, that he has to report, DIG has to report to the magistrate. Does the magistrate have a say on that? No. no. Uh, nothing no. much. No. Then, but the magistrate has a right 
to visit the place where the suspect is being detained without any prior notice at any time, then the similar authority had been extended to Human Rights Commission too. Then after three months, if there is any extension, then definitely that has to be done only with the concurrence of the magistrate. As you said, whether we can give it all those powers from the beginning, uh, subject to the supervision uh, of the courts, it, it, it's a matter rather if the parliamentary, if the lawmakers uh, yes, agrees on it. The judiciary is for the interpretation Yes, that of there the is no so, any objection from me. So, Dr. Rajapaj, you are saying if the bill is to be amended, this is one point that would be under contention and that this is one point that needs to be amended. Uh, you that, agree, that is this, why you th agree to this point as the Minister of Justice? Yeah, that is why I said that there, there were three criticisms. One was the admissibility of confessed statement. Number two was the power to detain a person by the Minister of Defence. The number three is the uh, definition of the terrorism. Those are the three real issues. And this is where that we must discuss and come to some consensus like that now, we Sal, did in 20 percent. Sal, is it easy as the Minister portrays this to be? It seems like a nice story that has been unraveled in front of us. This is a good piece of legislation. There is nothing wrong with it. There may be one or two clauses that may be a problem. Let's let's discuss and sort it out. Is it so? Yeah. My 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 view is I slightly I differ from one. Uh, I <coughs> I believe that we the country should have a special law on counter terrorism, but that law must ensure must protect the fundamental rights of people and must ensure that there is no abuse and there I, 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 I am totally in agreement with you that the power to issue for right from the beginning to detain to, to order the detention must be with the judiciary now what is the rationale where you you give that power to the deputy inspectors general of police in all the region and you don't give that power to the judiciary now, now, the problem here is, mm. the minister says that, uh, well, one of the contentions uh, against the PTA was that the political authority, the Minister of Defence can issue the detention order. And that was criticised. Now, you give the power to the DIGs. We know how, how our police operate. We know how the present Inspector General of Police has said, uh, about 90 percent of the OICs have been appointed a political appointment. 182 out of 100. Yes. And we know we know day in and day out how even the Inspector General of Police bows down to the political authority. And today look at what happened. Yes. Ajit Rohan uh, issuing that statement. Uh, th that is so. So so then are we really going to believe that the DIGs are going to use their independent mind devoid of any political interference? So just because, merely because you transfer the power of detention from the Minister of Defence, if the Minister of Defence takes a call to the DIG and says, detain so and so, are we really believing the DIG is going and to tell the time, Minister? And Sally, remember there was a time that one of the Ministers who is now an advisor to uh, Ryan Victim Singh, a Sagar uh, uh, DIG, um, uh, sorry, I, IGP, um, Jaisu, there was talking to someone and saying, no problem, sir, I will do whatever as, as you suggest. So that's, th right. th that's the danger. Yeah, so, so, so that is why we say that the supervision should be entirely with the judiciary, with the judiciary, so that the police can submit sufficient material. Let a senior magistrate go through it. Let a magistrate go through it and decide whether this material merits detention or not. And I think that that is fundamental. And uh, once again, the, uh, the, 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 the certainly uh, the minister is correct when he says that the, the present bill removes the confessions because uh, under the PTA there were confessions which were recorded mm. by an ASP and above were admissible. But I can tell you in 95% of the cases, the confessions were thrown out. Uh, thrown out because uh, the story of the police officers recording those confessions are very often uh, bordering on the absurd, bordering on the absurd. So I think this was the, uh, the so the confessions being thrown out is a good thing. But I, as I see the definition of the the broad uh, definition of the offence and the power to issue detention orders is extremely problematic. And I I I have to repeat myself to say 
that we must look at this in the light of the way the PTA was abused. And if this is going to be an, that, uh, that, uh, uh, the, that abuse is going to be extended to the ATA, then this bill will be no good. Mm. So you have, to, you have to fundamentally break away from the principles of the PTA. The PTA, the, uh, one of the cornerstones of the PTA was administrative detention. The, the 90 day detention which could go on for earlier 18 months, now yeah. later, later on 12 months. So we must, we must break away from those, uh, from, from the, uh, what was the, uh, what was fundamentally flawed in the PTA. Uh, Harini, why do I get the feeling when I, when I go through the procedure in which this has been brought into parliament, that the government's intentions are not clear. It seems that because the uh, Europeans wanted a uh, bill to be brought to Parliament to replace the PTA, they have brought in a piece of legislation to Parliament already or has been gazetted. Now it's there on the public domain, people can read it. And now there seems to be public opposition to this particular bill in question. As a result of that, now the government may tell uh, the international community, guess what? We were very progressive. We want to bring a piece of legislation. The people are opposing this. Henceforth, we will stick to the PTA. Would this happen in the future? <laughs> I think you are being too generous with the intentions of the government. Because uh, if, uh, that's, if that's the case, then there should be some measures taken. Then they could at least bring, about, uh, 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 bring back the Counterterrorism Act. Not in any, not that I'm supporting the Counterterrorism but Act either. But eighty percent of the Counterterrorism Act is in this bill in question, uh, Doctor Harry. Yes, but the definitions of terrorism, the executive is very, is very loose and very broad, and the executive powers that have been given through the uh, uh, through this bill are much more than in the Counterterrorism Act. Now you know, and the Counterterrorism Act was thrown. And also, just because the international community demands something of this government doesn't necessarily mean it's good for this country, right? So you, we forget what the international community is asking of us. This government has a responsibility. Our government has a responsibility to be accountable to the people of this country first, not to the international community. There's been a history of pro uh, persecution using the PTA in this country. It is in that context that we have to take understand the intentions so, of this government here. So and and uh, and in a context where this government is uh, is being headed by an unelected leader pushing through reforms which have not received the mandate of the people, where the 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 the, the label of terrorist is being freely thrown about to, uh, with, to anyone who is uh, critiquing or, or dissent, uh, expressing any form of dissent. Where the Aragala activists are by and large categorized as terrorists, that is the language that is being used currently. It is in that context that this bill has to, the intent behind this bill has to be taken into account. Where trade union leaders are being called terrorists, right? Uh, where uh, social media activists are being call, are called terrorists, that in that context, when this kind of legislation is brought before us, I don't think we can uh, uh, we can uh, we can uh, assume or uh, give any kind of uh, excuse to the government about their intent. Uh, Dr. Rajapaksha, when you look at this bill in question, like journalists like uh, Niresh, <laughs> uh, Ravindu, and I can also be <laughs> taken into custody based on this act. It's yes. very clear, it's, it's very broad. If you are a terrorist, certainly yes. No, if I am a terrorist or not, based on this definition, that, I might be that, taken to custody tomorrow. You know, that is a, That's that the is, fear that I have. That is a myth being spread by some, some people. After the Aragalaya, that's, we have introduced this bill, that is not correct. The secondly, because of the international community demands, it, we did it, that is also not correct. That is a policy decision we took uh, during the Yahapala and the commencement of the Yahapala, not only this fund, anti-terrorism, anti-corruption, all we started in 2015. But we cannot uh, deny the fact that there was a demand from the international community to, uh, to reduce the, you know, the, the rigidity of this uh, uh, PTA 
and that we started in 2015. And Nuan this said, again, yeah. that, that is not correct. What Nuan said is correct. Maybe he's not aware. Mm. Then thereafter, again, that we uh, restarted the drafting of this bill. Uh, so that soon after that, uh, I took the portfolio, this bill and anti-corruption uh, anti bill. Both I took over and appointed two committees and started drafting this one because this was a process. I was, you know, taking oh, so part. You, also, you were part of drafting the bill. No, no, no. That's I. I went through obviously that I've been the minister. That's I oversee everything. That every draft which comes to me, that I, I am I'm having so many consultations yeah, and discussion not, with them. Uh, now, Sali said some something very important. Why not table the documents or the minutes of this meetings in question so the public would be aware as to who opposed it and who were for it? Was it a unanimous decision that was taken? This Isn't is, that a possibility? If I, this if is, I may jump in here. One uh, moment that yes. this is the unanimous decision that they had taken because I finally, once it is drafted, that the, all the members of the committee, they d discuss in my presence after the preliminary draft was done and at the discussion also that we agreed on certain, you know, the amendments at that stage that we did everything with the uh, consent of all the parties that I can say that that is within my knowledge. Dr. Didyal actually bring this act, bring this bill with the pure intention of curtailing terrorism in this country. Certainly because if you look at that they they pick, pick uh, you know that uh, bit and pieces from that section and this section and say that the journalists can be arrested, that the trade unionists can be arrested but by reading it, the judges understand this, the lawyers understand this. You can't just, you know, pick and choose some of the section but, and say that then, by interpreting, one moment, interpreting that uh, <coughs> so and so can be taken. You will have to read the whole act. Now the section 2 categorically says the application of the act. Hmm. The number 3 says the uh, terrorist acts. Subject to section 2 and 3 only, all the other sections will be in operation. Yeah, now, but, this but is don't you think, don't only you think to principles of necessity, proportionality and legality has to be applied as far as definitions are concerned? Yeah, the definition is there in section 3 definition, exactly almost like the definition in the UK Terrorism Act. In the UK Terrorism Act is much broader in addition to what we have put here, it says any organized crime. Now, if you are even without a terrorist activity, if there had been a murder or a rape or a robbery as an organized crime, that is also considered as an act of terrorism. But we have we have excluded in our definition, we have excluded. Doctor, where on earth do terrorists go on rallies? Because this act contains section to prevent rallies public rallies. If your, the pure intention of bringing this act is to curtail terrorism in this country, mm. why do y'all, why did y'all inc include a section in regard to preventing rallies happening? No, that's the for the purpose of promoting and encouraging and also getting involved in the activities of terrorism. It can be done while having rallies while having, you know, that's by making use of the media. Isn't that dissent? Right now, that, that is finally... Is more dissent? Finally, no, there is no question of dissent. That has been, you know, that's when, when you have to draft a law uh, to prevent terrorism, that there are no two criteria, only one criterion that can be followed by any, any democratic country. On one side, that you say under the constitution there is a chapter for the protection of fundamental rights of the people it is a duty on the part of any government uh, to safeguard the fundamental rights but if there is a violation the remedy is given in the As constitution you that this this bill protects the fundamental rights of people no i, I couldn't finish this is not what i say is the on one hand that you will have to wait one hand on this side, that's the duty of the state to protect the fundamental rights. Now the scale, the other side is as a government to protect the nation. Protect the nation means the lives of the people, resources of the country, the, uh, 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 that's the integrity, that sovereignty of the country. 
that all kinds of thing that is the basic obligation unless the govern unless government protect the rights of the people that is the lives of the people how can you protect the rights fundamental rights of the people so no, the first no, no, thing is to let, safeguard let, the people let, 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 let's let's buy in what um, dr rajapaksa is saying fundamental right of a government is to protect the people on that premise not to protect protect the government Gov Gov yeah. not to protect there are government, government, but protect government the government can be changed even yeah. every day it yeah. can be changed now, tomorrow vijay rajapaksa you might not be the minister of justice in this country if there's a cabinet reshuffle no, no, you never know that that's how no, this tomorrow, government no tomorrow no today i'm the minister <laughs> of justice today you're the minister of justice <laughs> but tomorrow, tomorrow i'll be never... ordinary citizen yeah you so, must be or you may be we have we have really make the law but that it, we keep in that mind if there is <laughs> yeah, yeah. i will so, be nobody tomorrow yeah so <laughs> no one what, what, what are your thoughts on this so reluctantly i have to say Minister Mr. Rajpaksha is misleading the country, misleading the people. Why I am saying that? Now, this Section Three of this particular Act is, according to him and according to Act, interpret the offences. <coughs> Section Three B says, wrongfully or unlawfully compelling the government of Sri Lanka or any other government or an international organisation to do or to to abs abstain from doing any act. So this is the intention of this. act now what it says what the government doing now imposing taxes privatizing government institutions so when government is doing these kind of thing people have to resist that trade unions have to resist that public has to resist that then it says about any other government what india is doing now mm. they are going to grab lands here when india are doing that that sacred right is with the people that fundamental right is with people to dissent that then it says international organization what imf doing that in the guise of giving money they are imposing lot of conditions which against the people then the people have sacred right to fight against that if they are fighting this is in conjunction with section 32 32 says causing obstruction with any public place or any essential service then what it says it says trade unions cannot take actions to resist whatever action taken by the government against the people then they can interpret that terrorist so therefore the intention is very clear so nothing to hide then as you correctly pointed out section 10 and 11 says publications terrorist publication what is a terrorist publication now you know what happened to ramsi rasik ramsi rasik just publish a post saying that we we should have a ideological war then he was arrested and detained for four months so whatever thing i express who is going to interpret executive going to interpret executive interpreting mean definitely historically it has been abused that is a nation then one point now no one no, no, if you don't mind please uh, uh, dr rajapaksha now based on based on section 82 which says that empowers the president to prescribe organizations on the recommendation of the inspector general of police or the government if the president has reasonable grounds to believe the organization is engaged in an act amounting to an offense under the proposed law or is acting in an unlawful manner prejudicial to the national security of sri lanka hmm. does that mean that the president will have the power to prescribe an organization like the frontline socialist party in the future no not frontline but if they if they resort to terrorist activities of course yes now even our ltt organization has been proscribed under a similar provision in pta no, pta no, under under pta no That's even our ltt it our ltt organization has been proscribed by not only by sri lanka then how can the other countries did it the uk canada everywhere that ltt is a proscribed organization that that is the, the law in their countries also that not only the terrorist organization in their countries the terrorist organization our countries have been proscribed by all the western countries and usa Dr Rajapaksa uh, one of the issues uh, that I personally have with this and I went through it very very carefully and over that 30 years that is good that is good we so, invite you yes. to go through all those things and have a dialogue yes. if there is any lacuna I will fill it yes and I've been a journalist for over 30 years I've seen many pieces of uh, legislation. legislation some good some bad um and the section 3 from your father also that you might be having That's thank you <laughs> uh the um Section three, which is the definition of terrorism, is extraordinarily vast. It seems to capture practically anything and everything uh, in uh, public life. 
Hmm. Uh, for example, Section uh, 32G speaks of committing the offence of robbery, extortion or theft in respect of state or private property. Hmm. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, somebody, if there's theft in a private property? Uh, no, any robbery or any theft which is related to a terrorist activity, whereas you can remember uh, that they, during that uh, conflict period, even how many banks uh, safe were removed by these terrorist uh, activities. Activists and that the, all the banks, almost all the banks, in, especially in North and East, that they were robbed. But this that is they were, that was done by terrorists. Broad, don't you think? Uh, no, that that is been, now there are four lawyers here. We can have four different opinions. When if you have to appear before a court, we'll assume that you are the judges. That we will, we four, four of us will make four interpretations, different type of interpretations. Now that is why that's the, like in every other country, there is a system where if there is any uh, violation of the fundamental rights or unconstitutionality in, in the provisions of this bill, finally that has to be uh, interpreted by the Supreme Court. That is why that's the constitution no, the has is, opened. The problem is Dr. Rajapaksha, now what Salia pointed out, what Farman said, what Harini said and even Nuan. The problem is, this is not being brought to the public domain as a paper that needs to be reviewed by the public. It is coming in as a How paper. How can you bring the, what is the procedure provided in the constitution to make all these bills be made aware to the people? Uh, if I may, that is the gazetting. Uh, yes, that is the gazetting. No, but I, in addition to that, sir. the ideology on behind this one had been discussed for about three to four years, whereas even that uh, Bar Association was include, included and... No, but the Bar Association has today issued a statement almost telling to repeal most of the sections in the uh, clauses and then 17 ultimately sections. 17 sections yeah. and then saying uh, it is the view of this committee that the provision stipulated in the, in the said bill violates the fundamental rights uh, under Chapter 3 of the Constitution of Sri Lanka, especially in, the, in light of Article 14. <coughs> Therefore, this committee recommends the Bar Association of Sri Lanka to inform the Ministry of Justice to revisit the said bill in order to amend the provisions discussed above and to challenge the said bill in the correct forum. But Talia, that is, that is the, the Bar procedure. Association was not consulted during the... No, the, one moment, I, only one minute. That is the procedure that we, do, not only we, that every government yeah. do. If you look at that <laughs> central bank bill, the new bill that was challenging the Supreme Court IT, that there are... They are referred to 40 odd sections. They say that unless that you amend, uh, you can't pass no, that but, bill. But that's very simple, Dr. Vijayas Rajapaksha. Now you bring in a bill, then this is challenged in the Supreme Court. And yes. then when the voting takes place, you don't attend parliament. Make a point? Yeah, then you don't attend parliament. No, that is that you are making some malicious allegations. No, it's not malicious. No, you are having no. a different agenda. No, not only, no, not only now not, that I'm I have, I have I followed not, throughout no, in I'm all our discussion. No, although not, I, no, I, 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 I come as a matter of courtesy when the serious make a request for no, me no, to Dr. come Rajpaksa, here. We are I come, about but always that you are coming with different agenda. No, but this is, but no you this, might be having a no, different grudges against the politicians. So, Mr. Anil Vikram Singh, anybody? No, no, I don't have any personal grudges. But please, please be fair as a journalist. Be fair, be fair, journalist. So, but no, Rajpaksa, that's I, I reject. I no, totally. But, but but that's that's how things are. No, no, that is. Now let's say let's say the twentieth no, amendment. No, if you have any grudge with how me, how, we will how, have how a different. How, how many politicians rejected this? How no, many politicians if, rejected this? If you have any grudge against me, and then what happened? No, fix they another they, meeting. They, no, you turn, not, I didn't come to the member of the constitution. No, I didn't Nine come as a courtesy to your request. I came as a courtesy to Sirius. Raj, no, Dr. Raj but if you, do, if you cannot go ahead to the agenda, no, this is then the you, agenda. Go, you go ahead but, with that but, one. But, I don't know. But this is the agenda that we are talking about today. No, then don't talk rubbish. This is not rubbish, Dr. Raj. This is what people want to know. You are talking nonsense. People want to know what's happening. You wanted to have a decent, you know, the discussion with professionals. So we are having You also try to maintain the professionalism. So we are discussing about this. Don't be ridiculous like this. We are talking about the matter that is being discussed. I know that, how, but uh, the way that so you are the, talking. The, the, this is the, this is the Don't be of ridiculous. No, this is not being ridiculous. It's, uh, it's an insult part. to journalists. This is not. This is not. We are you talking see about that facts. how how decently all, all five, of course, five lawyers are talking about, doing it. So everyone is talking about it. What happens right now is you, there is, you, bill there that is, is anything that you wanted to ask on this bill. That's you what we are asking. That's what we are asking. Without just wasting our time and the people. You are trying to add something. You are doing a lot of injustice to your spectators. They are wasting time because of your nonsense. 
So what I emphasized earlier to you is that's why I said that we are we are by being main premise of the argument mm. is that there is no judicial intervention. Otherwise, Mr. the Honourable Minister Nuan, Mr. Salia Pires, an Honourable Member, I have four different opinions on what section 2, 3, 5 or whatever it is, right? So now if you take this bill, the first point is where the DO is issued. The magistrate comes in there and within 48 hours it will be produced. There is no judicial intervention there when the DO is issued. issued. <coughs> Same as the PTA. So you can't go to court, you can't agitate, you can't do anything. Then he has to be, the suspect has to be produced every 14 days, all right. But what, just to go and say some good niceties, that's all. For the next three months, you can't, you can't agitate yourself, you can't get bail, nothing. Now, take the example of Hijaz Isbul, as I said, I'll bring it out. Now, the, when the case came up before the magistrate, the Honorable Attorney General came and said, he is the, appeared and said, he is the Anton Balasingham of this whole thing. Now, this is what the Attorney General said, or the representative of the Attorney General came and said in the magistrate's court. Then in the Supreme Court, when three children, Nuan was there, when the three children alleged that they were kidnapped and questioned by the CID, the Honorable Attorney General came to court and said that this is this is this is connected to the East Abba, East Abba blast. Now these were the statements made by the Honorable Attorney General, right? Now if if these if documents were available to the court at that time, the Supreme Court or whichever court that can go go through these matters in the first week or two, right? Then court can say what are you talking about? Ultimately, what the indictment signed by the former Attorney General was some hate speech someday in August somewhere, long before this attack. So, what I'm trying to emphasize here is there has to be judicial intervention. Even after the three months, I mean, it's very dangerous. There, it's some confidential statement that is given to the what is magistrate. Confidential? A, a confidential a statement. Report. To, yes, so a confidential statement to the magistrate, and then the magistrate has to decide whether he is giving bail or not. That can't be the case. If it's confidential statement, at least a redacted copy, a redacted copy has to be given to the other side so they can agitate. And bail can be granted by you know, probably not the magistrate, but a court of appeal or the Supreme Court or wherever. So that's why I said our, our, our premise is very simple here. There has to be judicial intervention and the possibility of granting bail. If uh, I'll take this example again of Hijaz, if within the first week he would have been granted bail if the Supreme Court had documents before them to see what the what the what the allegations are and what what the evidence that they have. Uh, this was total. The, the, it was a total travesty of justice. Too. And today, what he's been charged about? Some speech made in 2018, something like that. After the Attorney General came and said it's connected to the Easter bombing, that he's the Anton Balasingham of this whole thing. This is one example I want to bring to the limelight, not because of the person, but this is the danger of this whole thing. And this, then I said also talk. And today, uh, Farman, the former Attorney General has gone to Supreme Court for for not recording. Yeah, he's about to sign the indictment. Anyway, statement. that's a different matter. Yeah. So uh, that's why I said now in, in Australia, the case that we handled there, you know, the difference in the Attorney General's department there or the prosecutor, the prosecutor and the investigators are different. They are separate. The investigation do the, the investigators do the investigation. The prosecutors do the prosecution. See, there when there was a there was a discrepancy in in the investigation within the first three weeks, the prosecution called the counsel of the of the suspect and said, file a motion. We are giving, we are granting, we are consenting to bail immediately the next day. But what does our, our, our Attorney General's department needs a bit of rehabilitation. Oh, our, psyche, our psyche is different. They do the investigation and they do the prosecution and they want to see that you hang somebody. That is, whether you like it or not, that is our Attorney General's department. Right? So that is why I say that the judicial intervention is very important. From the first day, a, a magistrate or a court of appeal or a Supreme Court or High Court, the court needs to be involved in this whole process and, and the power to grant bail and to look into documents. So and, let's, uh, let's ask Dr. Rajapaksha about, uh, about the section 36 that Farman was talking about. Uh, of the bill states, a confidential report must be filed before the magistrate if the police wish to extend the DO beyond the initial three-month period. The proceedings are to be held in camera. Yeah, that is the one that they are, uh, the police, while they go on their investigations, that they find some materials uh, against certain persons and if before that investigation is completed, if certain informations are leaked out, that the rest of the evidence or the rest of the other materials where that's they were trying to trace to establish an offence will be obstructed. Now that is why these provisions had been there. That's I also question from the drafters as to why that kind of the provisions are there. So that is, it, it, yeah. say, it says the, it says shell. 
Yeah. So you're giving, you're enabling the, you're enabling the authorities to give confidential statement. Yeah, so the, if you read the wording, yes, yeah. he, he shall and then proceed. Yeah. You know, so you shall give a confidential statement and then proceed. Yeah. So that wording is very, very dangerous. Yeah, that's, that is why he said that yeah. there are instances, no, no, there are opportunities. After this is being presented, then it will go to the Supreme Court. Then it be, uh, in the, at the same time. It can be taken up before the consultative committee. Then there will be a, that uh, sectoral committee. The all those at all those places we will have to discuss. Yeah, it. But Dr. Ashmore, you that? said that you also went through this particular bill in question, yes. Yes. and now you are saying on this very show that there are issues with the bill itself. Yes. Now you spoke about section 36. Yeah. And you said there is there was some sort of confusion, and you also raised doubts from those who drafted this bill in question, why was this in incorporated? Yes, they so why couldn't it. Have, so why couldn't have that been done at that stage itself and not incorporate such a clause in the bill? Because That's they, the question. they justified it. For They justified it for an example that they have found one information, the certain person has committed an offence and we'll say that he has collected some funds for terrorism and that had been deposited in a particular account or it has been kept somewhere else. Then through that one, they let go through further investigations. Now, if this uh, information, whatever they have gathered, is disclosed in advance, uh, they will never be able to collect the rest of the information and the evidence. And but, that is uh, how that they justified it. If it is illegal, if it is illegal, certainly Supreme Court will say that this is unconstitutional. No, no, but, knowing, but, knowing but, our sorry, just one yeah, now, the problem is the Supreme Court will look at the bill. For constitutional constitutional yeah. but there are there are provisions which may be technically accord in accordance with the constitution but nevertheless which are bad now the supreme court does not look at the merits of the bill it looks at the constitutionality so this is why i say that before we come to the stage of the supreme court considering or the bill being gazetted this is, these provisions should have been should have been discussed with the stakeholders and I, I think the legal profession is a very important stakeholder. Because, for, for instance, the, the issue of the, the detention order, the CTA, the, C, the CTA bill of 2018 contemplated the detention order by a DIG only for two weeks. And after that, the judge had to decide. Just two weeks. Now, we, give, we say three months. Now. I do not understand how section 36, after three months, you come up with a confidential report. You are uh, you are saying lawyers can be represented. But if the confidential report is not made available to the lawyer of the, uh, the person of the detainee, how can he make submissions? You are, try you are basically asking him to, uh, you tie one hand behind his back and ask him to uh, uh, fight. And, and and knowing our uh, police uh, officers, they will uh, come up with some I, tall stories, uh, which will we, be we in had the, the report. We, we had this experience. No, uh, we had this experience in Masanta Mudlegi's case, where the where sometimes the, the the authorities try to find uh, confidential documents, and some of those actually some of those documents they are nothing confidential, but you know the, this is the this is the psyche. Of, of some of some of the uh, police officers. That's why I said they, they, uh, in Australia, and they, I, I, they I, give I, a protected I mean, copy. I, I, I they, the magistrate the, decide. The magistrate. Shares with a, a, a no, I that really, is abused yeah, by the I, police. From the beginning, yes. that I have, I, in yeah. fact, that this uh, the police abuse also, I am the one who, you know, they disclose to the yes. country. Yeah. And that is why I said I am still in open mind that yeah. I have yeah. never I have never come to any kind of conclusion about any of these sections. Yeah. 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 Dr. Rajapaksha is an open mind. Let me to say this now. Uh, Dr. Rajapaksha said this is to prevent the abuse of the PT. Now I will quickly go through sec six sections just to show that this is not to prevent the abuse, just to exaggerate the mm. uh, abuse. Because now section 16 says disobeying the order. Now, re recently, all, most of the magistrates refused to grant orders uh, to restrain the protest and public demonstration. Now, inter why they, they bring Section 16? That power has been given to police. If police give certain orders, if disobeying, two years sentence. Then Section 44, uh, even Vasanta Mudalike case and the Hijasi Bulla case, the oh, very progressive orders given by the magistrate, even you are under detention order, you have to file 
uh, uh, reports under section 116 and 115 of the criminal procedure court before magistrate those orders were there under section 44 now that they need not to do it anymore that's the intention of section 44 just to once again abuse then section 71 says suspending or defer the indictment if he has there are plenty of cases they just detained for several years no evidence at all then uh, attorney general cannot even file an indictment then when it goes to the trial high court judges blaming the attorney general why you detain these people just to avoid that under section 71 you can defer the indictment for 20 years then it's just like a hostage taking of person for 20 years without any evidence you can keep him as a suspect then that is to without without, without, a, without, a time without filing indictment mm. 20 years is just like a hostage taking mm. of a person no, no, can we ask that another, another yeah. three points yeah, okay. mm. quick then section 82 proscription orders then section 83 restraining orders against particular person for example vasanth mudilike the restraining order can be given by the uh, president not to enter into universities what is the purpose of that he's a he's a student activist so that power has been given to uh, the president then likewise rehabilitation sending rehabilitation under section 100 when you go through all these six section that is to actually now uh, executive taking powers to exaggerate the abuse of the PTA mm. PTA these provisions were not there so it is very clear by putting when this when you take the holistic idea of this act there are ample of evidence to say that this is to abuse the executive power so i think since, since the minister is there he is answerable to this why you put this section we will we'll ask we will ask the minister why did you put this section yes, sir, we'll now now dr all. rajapaksa don't say that you didn't draft this bill yes mm. i have already told you no mm. why you, should i you, repeat it yeah but you, you i said it yeah you, i you, said it that was drafted by an expert committee mm. But I take the responsibility. Here and they are and in the parliament everywhere. There is no any issue about that. But I think, Bupagi, I think that you have misunderstood the whole uh, purpose of that's the uh, deferment of the uh, indictment. As I guess Charlie knows in most of the countries that is there. Uh, when you know that some people, some youngsters, that's the, without having the knowing the gravity of it, Sometimes they get involved. The best, best example is that Easter Sunday attack. Now that's, there are so many uh, youngsters that who had been detained. And uh, in a case like this, sometimes that uh, when they come and confess, uh, or oh, if it is the opinion of the Attorney General, that you know, they have been misled and done something wrong. And they regret of it. And that they have no idea of continuing it. That kind of person, uh, instead of you know uh, the going through the indictment and a trial and punishing them uh, just to give them a time period that's if they have been really rehabilitated in the sense that they, they have understood the gravity of it and now they live as uh, good citizens then the, 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 these uh, uh, charges will be dropped is it a, is it a bad thing it is will they be detained bad. for 20 years it is years? an extremely dangerous not detained thing not detained that no, is no. what the deferment for no, but you look at the, all, the, all the European countries that, that these provisions are there. What is happening? What that is, well, the, that is, that is within that you understand. Country, you know. If it's a European country or American country, if, it, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Doesn't matter which country it's practiced, it's wrong. So he, the pro problem here is that we can go through the technicalities of the law. But I would like to understand from the minister what is the justification for bringing this law in at this point in time. What was the analysis? What is the threat that this country is facing right now that requires this kind of law that adds to the existing PTA, not in any way repealing it, but makes it even more draconian? So what is the security threat? What is the national security threat that we are Shall currently facing? I'm not finished. That we are currently facing that requires this kind of law. And now we are, see, now this law has been drafted and has been gazetted or is going to be pre-tabled in parliament very soon, right? But here we are picking this law apart. There are four eminent lawyers here who are finding plenty of things wrong with this law. Do you mean to say that this ex expert committee that the minister set up to draft this law was unaware of these problems? That is why I'm saying the intentions behind this law have to be really closely examined. This is not some 
uh, innocent mistake. This is not something where you know the, they, they didn't really understand the consequences of this draft. This is very deliberate. This is very deliberate. This is a response to the people's uprising that we have experienced in this country, which shook the established establishment and the status quo of this country to its very foundations. This, the political establishment and the status quo in this, uh, the people who want to preserve the status quo in this country want to make sure that this kind of aragale never happens again. This is the intention behind the law. Let's be clear about this. This is nothing to do with the PTA, repealing the PTA or the national, or national security. I once let, I mean, I would really be interested in the minister's response. What is the analysis? What is the security? analysis that was done that justified this piece of legislation. Shall we ask the minister, uh, Harini, yes, with please. your permission, yes. Yes, another question, perhaps yeah. the minister can also answer, why have we not included the judicial supervision from day one in this act? Mm. The, P the biggest drawback in the PTA was judicial intervention, judicial supervision. I keep on saying that. Why can't we add that into this act? Why, why is the thinking that it's not there in this mm. act? Even this 20-year thing, even this 20-year the delay, the indictment first, would be able to be agitated in court. Mm. You should be able to challenge these things. Right. So, that, that so you have two points to uh, respond. Now, yeah, yes. <laughs> under the existing PTA, when the Minister of Defence issues uh, detention orders, even the Supreme Court cannot, you know, entertain any application. They, they cannot see the validity of it. Supreme Court can under the PTA, under the PTA, under the PTA they can. right? The Supreme Court, the fundamental rights jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Continues. Continues, but that's the very reality that the Supreme Court has yeah. intervened because yes. that's they can't take, they take the responsibility with regard to the defense of the country. And now, uh, one argument, because that there can be many arguments, I will not stick to one. One argument is if, a, if it is an order made by the uh, detention order made by a DIG, the, any order made by the DIG is subject to the judicial supervision. The, the detention orders made by the DIG could be challenged by of an FR, fundamental rights jurisdiction. Under the new amendments, uh, not only the uh, only by the Supreme Court, any decision taken by the by even the president as the Minister of uh, Defence could be challenged by way of a writ jurisdiction. That is correct, no? Now that's the, that, that has been expanded after the 19th amendment. The fundamental rights jurisdiction was expanded. Then after the 20th amendment, that's, we repeal most of the things, but there were good qualities in that one. One was, even if it is a decision of the president in his capacity as a minister, that can be challenged in the court of appeal by way of writ. All those things are open. Uh, one entered advantage is that the judicial, as Parman said, there is a question issue to be considered that why the judicial supervision to be not to be allowed even for a particular period that we will have to discuss. But now, unlike that the orders made by the Minister of Defence that uh, it is open for the judicial review in both courts. The other thing is that uh, they said that is all of a sudden why that it just after the Aragale we bring that. I don't think that it is a, it is just a fair comment about it because the process commenced in 2015. The otherwise, uh, the what can happen? Now, the, the, all the criticism is that the existing PTA is bad. It is too uh, stringent, that is too draconian. Uh, that, that is too... It is worse. If it is worse, then we can forget about this one. Oh, we that's can what, throw no, it no, out. That's what, we that's can throw it out. In, in fact, wha why bring a bill like this in a hurry? Uh, without proper stakeholder. Okay, that is why I said I you, uh, you must not use no, that hurry no, because right. I said that is started in 2015. Uh, yeah, well, when there is a terrorism that they will not give advance notice. Mm -hmm. Now it happened on the Easter Sunday that the, they got some information that's a different thing than before that we had that the LTT terrorism. Whatever the attacks they do, they, they don't give advance in advance to the government or the authorities. Uh, Harina, are you satisfied with the minister's answer to no, your question? I, I mean, I have an, now I have an additional question: is yeah. whether the Easter attack could have been prevented had this the act been in place? I think uh, most, I, I don't most think of the so. MPs would have had to be locked up. For yes, for, uh, for, for uh, <laughs> yes, because they were right? informed. So in again, advance. my question is: what what is the evidence 
that was collected, <coughs> what was the analysis that was done of the set threat to national threat to the country that justified this law, other than the fact that you have there was a call to repeal the PTA, repeal the PTA, and what is it? The third question: What is it that is missing in our criminal procedure that cannot deal with these kinds of issues? You know, that the, just to people have not given any mandate to anybody about. to you know uh, to put the uh, the security of the national defense at a stake you know that after the uh, Easter Sunday attack that the political landscape of this country got you know changed uh, you know in 2019 in the presidential election the what was the main theme in the, in, the, in the winning candidate, the Gotabe Rajapaksha's theme was the national defense is the most important thing in the country. That, that was the, you know, the, the topic uh, in almost every, you know, that uh, political campaign that they were discussing. And that is how that he got that uh, 69, 6.9 million votes. Therefore, the, therefore the, you cannot bargain with the national security, that the people won't allow that to happen. Even just because that the government members want it, that it, it won't be permitted by the people. This is national security but is a must. But, but, but is that the same no, if social you say, contract? If you say that you forget about the lives of the people, let that some people to be killed, let that the properties to be destroyed. Uh, I don't but think still, you are still, 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 no. That is what you say indirectly. What you say, My even killing, was, even dying, even evidence? even murdering, no problem. No, so what but you say that the fundamental rights. No, what I, I have not come across the, the, the a single country where no, that after, it has after been after done. But after the Aragalia, Dr. Uh, Rajapaksa, after the Aragalia. Didn't things change? Right now, the need of the hour isn't it an election by the people? Why? Harini's point is, why do we bring forth uh, no, that, acts of this sort that, when the need of the hour is, is to I said, resort? If you think, if the people think it's a you know haphazard thing, all of a sudden because of the Aragale, this has been brought. The government, the the, the the easiest you know the solution the government can, can find is. We can throw it out. The PTA will continue. In the preamble, I mean, yeah. I cannot. In yeah. the preamble, it says now, when whatever definition, ultimately you have to go through that. In the preamble, says what is the purpose of bringing this act? Number one, it says terrorism has seriously threatened the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Sri Lanka. Mm. So, what is the terrorism available now, existing now? Yes, yeah, so Raj if you look at it, no, when the, the government in, is in, in, in 1972, in 88, 89, did they give prior to, uh, that so the notice? Did uh, Prabhakaran give prior notice that we are attacking the central bank or the Dalada Malika on such and such day? What was prevention no, of that's the, in the, as, prevent as a result of the in 1971, 12,000 people were killed of course. either side. Then that's uh, 88, 89, the JVP struggle, 60,000 people were killed. In the Prabhakaran's terrorism, 60,000 people were killed. Now you say that even with this one, you could not resist the. Uh, wait, wait, you could not resist the Easter Sunday attack. Yes. But as a result, that with the Easter Sunday attack, if that government did not make use of this act, do you know how many other thousand people should have been killed in many parts of the country? No. The who will take that, the responsibility that, no, for that, it? That, that, will you it, take that? No, no, that's very wrong. Now, no, how prevention, can you say of, wrong? prevention of terrorism act was there for 40 years. Now, what I'm asking, was it able to prevent the activities of the LTT? Or is that a... No, it couldn't. Instead of that, mm. what happened was it has been used to repress the people. That is what happened. If, if, if minister says that law was sufficient to control the prevent of terrorism, of course, I can believe that. Even regarding the uh, East attack, uh, Dr. Rajapaksha openly criticized the cabinet and the Ranil Vikram Singh is responsible for that because there were ample intelligence report. So what is the nexus between the prevention of terrorism act and that uh, conduct of the ministers and the cabinet? So that is, then, then if, if they want to prevent attack like uh, East attack, then the minister must bring a act to punish the uh, government officers who were unable to exercise their duties. So that is not what happened. They brought a draconian law. So if they can, if if the minister can prove the connection between the East attack and 
the prevention of terrorism act of course uh, uh, this uh, anti terrorism act he can justify but there's no connection we know what is the reason for his attack so so dr rajpal if you look at it the government is investing to reduce the number of uh, security forces as well right now because of the economic crisis and so so forth so isn't this a threat to national security it is not a case where everybody can it is it's a, it's a good argument you know that while even having this uh, pta the ltt continued so much of people were killed but that sometimes if there was no this particular law and if it was not uh, constrained by using the provisions of this act sometimes that okay you are not sitting here i am not sitting here that we may be in a different world that's the we, we may not have had have sri lanka now that was the threat and that was resisted by using this law that is why quite correctly when farman from the beginning he said he also said that so uh, that, that yeah. you can see the fact that we need the law but that law has to be here you know that's the uh, such a good one where that's the citizens the uh, citizens will not face unwarranted uh, hazards that's we we can see it that but, but clearly minister this has been uh, done in a hurry uh, in fact as a journalist when we go through we spot mistakes and i spotted several spelling errors in it so they have not bothered yeah, to spell check it so, so you see yeah. uh, and i would uh, now you you so sorry yes in the the in in the preamble the name of the country is spelled wrong, wrong lanka um so you mentioned about the international uh, pressure uh, to repeal the P pta and so on uh, but there are some aspects uh, of this uh, bill which are completely inconsistent like the death penalty a uh, section 41a the the death penalty has been included hmm. so certainly the international community would not i think agree with that one uh, and uh, there is another section where shall uh, i answer to that person the, yes. the doctor, people getting confused yes. i think the attorney general himself to can undertake in front of the supreme court that they would not implement death penalty in this country and in such context what's the reason of adding such provisions to a hmm. modern piece of legislation no even before that in 2015 that there is a uh, procedure in the un uh, whereas that we agree for moratorium as uh, the minister the minister at that time that uh, we agreed i think we extended when i was there we extended twice every time two years i think I am. I have not checked that. I think even at present that uh, undertaking is continuing mor moratorium. We are having the death penalty, but still we don't execute. That is there. In 1918, the situation was the same. In Charlie knows in uh, Counter Terrorism Act, the maximum punishment we had stipulated is only 20 years. The Supreme Court asked the question from I think Mr. Manohar Dasil. was appearing in the case president's counsel the supreme court asked the question that if your mother in law is killed by uh, by somebody then uh, uh, the penalty is the death penalty if your mother in law is killed by the by a terrorist that is only 20 years how can you do it and the supreme court says it, that is i have the determination but then what's the that you must have a consistency of the law and it must be according to the consti constitution of the country Yeah, they are for the fitness of murder the supreme court says it has to be the death penalty otherwise you will have to go for a two third and uh, referendum if that we our draft it was not according to the law supreme court said that you correct it so the Sal supreme court has corrected it so not by me this, when you look at this piece of legislation now as dr rajpak said there are a lot of interpretations must the piece of legislation be like that shouldn't there be an interpretation that is been decided upon at least by a cross section of the community rather than having lot of people going against it now look at the bar association you are the form president of the bar association you are against this we have farman kasim from the stb who is against this we have harini from npp we have uh, nuan bopage from the frontline socialist party there are a lot of institutions civil rights organizations like the cpa Uh, like the human rights commission all of them are against this particular bill in question shouldn't there be some sort of uniformity when it comes to a piece of legislation so that the people would be able to better understand the contents 
I, I think that it is not correct. The Human Rights Commission, the chairperson, that uh, the former Supreme Court, that that he has made some comments and uh, saying that this there are a lot of improvements in this and as he, he has admired this one. Yeah. What I, what I do feel is I th I think the, uh, as I said it at the beginning, I see the major flaw in this bill is that that it has been introduced without sufficient information being given to the stakeholders and without sufficient consultation. Now, now, now for instance, the minister has certain justification. So then you must, he, if, if you do inform the public, if you, if you tell the people, if you say these are the reasons, then maybe some of the sections, some of the clauses, you might be able to convince the public. But then we, if you don't do that, so I, I reiterate it once again that although or if the minister says there was a unanimity among that committee, the, uh, I, but I, I would request the minister to double check the minutes because the information I have is that there was no unanimity. No unanimity sense that there was a really, that's the uh, law enforcement authorities were not quite satisfied with the time period of three months. They said that there are, you know, not like those days, the terrorists are nowadays. The he has said the local and international. No, the problem with the and law... And therefore, they wanted a longer time. The problem with the law enforcement, this is where I say that what they want is the police want, they are preserved. The police would like to have a longer detention period. So, but here, now, the, now the, in this committee, there were certain members from the private bar. Uh, I'm not so sure whether they, they unanimously agreed with these provisions. Uh, so, so the, we can, if, if you can... May, may, may I just, just yes. interrupt that? Uh, Ali, you know, when, when lawyers get together, that have you ever seen that all lawyers have agreed on one... Uh, no, one no, but you said, you said, Dr. That, there are, that there, there, are, there are, you know, the differences of opinion. Yes. That is why that's the Constitution has provided that let the Supreme Court to, to, to decide ultimately what the correct no, thing no, is. Uh, no, uh, no, with respect, uh, what I say is you... Uh, the, the, you must put the put it on the table. Let people make people aware. Now, this is this is a fundamental flaw in our lawmaking process. We think that from it is from the gazetting. Well, between the gazetting and tabling in Parliament, you have a week. I mean, I mean, no, uh, we have extended. No, it to now two you weeks. have extended it. But uh, the, no, after tabling in Parliament, then you have two weeks to challenge. Now, can you expect a member of the public? to go through all these hundred and odd sections and to understand. No, you must in layman's terms explain to the public these are the broad provisions. Now this is what we plan to do. So that then the relevant stakeholders, the maybe the bar, maybe other, uh, and this is not a matter concerning only the bar. I think other professional organizations will have to be concerned because some of these sections, uh, I, I was looking at uh, section three uh, section 3F says, any per, it says causing serious obstruction or damage to or interference with essential services. Now, assume that some, the port strike, then someone might say that is interference with essential services. And that could be construed as terrorist. terrorist. And then uh, it says, or surprise with any critical infrastructure or logistic facility associated with any essential service or supply. And then it says unlawfully preventing any government from functioning or wrongfully compelling the government to do or abstain from doing any act. Now, so, so if we know that trade union action, it may not be always palatable to everyone, but trade union action is a legitimate uh, way of, uh, of, uh, of fighting for your rights. We know the minister may remember in 1976, the, the United National Party had a general strike. We were, we were school children at that time, there was a general strike, the entire country was crippled. But that is not a terrorist tactic. No, but if but you, but if you, you look at it, 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 what I say, yeah. now essential service, now we will say that there are, you know, the hospital services, where that there is an insurgency, there are some, you know, conflicts going on, uh, there are terrorist activities going on. Then the essential service for the poor, for ordinary people to get the, you know, that the, uh, the medical treatments. Only in that kind of situation that can apply. So now, the, the, now, even under the existing law, that there are powers. 
to the president uh, to make yes. that kind of declarations and also <coughs> some similar provisions. Yeah. But, but is there any occasion where that the PTA has been used to curtail the activities of the trade union? Uh, PTA has been used. Where? PTA, PTA has, was used. In no, if it has been done, that is wrong. But I'm PTA just asking uh, where, yes. when it the, was the P PTA has been used, the instance which I gave, mm -hmm. personal dispute between a politician at that time and uh, the uh, uh, famous uh, Sri Lankan singer. Detention order was issued. Personal dispute, nothing to do with uh, terrorism. I, uh, I, we, there are there are instances where the PT has been. So the, the that is where that's the Minister of Defence had exercised his powers. The Minister, that time it was not the Minister of Defence, the Minister of National Security who National issued the National Security. Video. That's right. So, but he, so <laughs> now he, that is why that all these allegations were against so the politicians. That's no, right. If, if Mr. If, if the Honourable Minister, personal or the Honourable Minister behind the is presiding, and if you go and agitate a case like this, then within a day or two you would realize that the, this is this is political interference or this is a trade union action. Then a judge can come and say, that's, that's why I keep on emphasizing this fact, a judge can say this is not terrorism, this is your, your just trying to quell uh, trade union action. There has to be, uh, I, do, I disagree with what the minister said that the DIG's uh, position can be, uh, the detention order can be challenged, you can't. Once the detention order is there, three months you can't do anything, that is in the act, that is very clear. No, that that's is in the magistrate court for month, but that yeah. your rights to go to the Supreme, Supreme Court, court by court, right, but that is We have to create law, yeah. that will take another donkey's years to create law. So, you are still creating law in the PTA for the FR. How, you may how difficult is this yeah. whole process? How, yeah. I mean, you, so these are ordinary people who are going to be prosecuted and, and, under this law. And, and the risk of it is, uh, the, we have fought 30, 40 DIGs. The DIG in Monaragala doesn't like the face of someone. Yeah. Uh, issues a detention order right. for three months. Yeah. By the time they come that to is, the... Uh, that is, uh, uh, Salih, even now, really also we said no, that uh, there are there are provisions in the law like that the dangerous drugs ordinance that has been abused that is true now take section 296 the murder is is prohibited that is a criminal offense under our law now there are enough instances that you have experienced much more than me that's the you not know, the actual person who has murdered somebody some innocent person had been caught Yes. Finally, that you know. No, just that is okay. because just because of that reason, you don't suggest that the section 396 to be repealed. No, all, all the more reason why you must have safe yeah, that's and right. You, you that, must, that is yes. that and is what we are going to do. the reason why but we have to make laws that do not allow for that kind of discretion to various sections of the, no, 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 the security establishment. I recollect our Rajapaksa when. When there was issues with you and former President Gotabe Rajapaksa, you said that Gotabe Rajapaksa called you and reprimanded you. And then you went on record saying, uh, if this is my state as a parliamentarian, just imagine the state of the people. Yes. You know? So, so is it... This is the thing, I mean... No, we that, are, is we are... why, that, is, that, that is why whenever I got the first chance, the, the first earliest occasion, I introduced the 21st Amendment. And even with regard to the police abuse, now the police commission and all the other independent commissions came in again with regard to the corruptions. Then we introduced the procurement commission and national audit commission that that we have attended. But that is precisely I, the I, reason. I don't know whether the minister will. Uh, I can ask one question for the minister. Now the minister appreciates that there is this abuse happens in the police. Yeah, I appreciate. But I wonder whether the, I, I admit. Yeah, but I wonder whether your colleague who is in charge of the police appreciates this. We are recently, I saw an article to the contrary. No, maybe. <laughs> Whether your ministerial <laughs> colleagues who are in charge of the police force uh, appreciate that these things do happen do in happen. the police force. No, yes, earlier, that is that's our duty when we have to make legislations. It doesn't mean it is a legislation done by the government. Finally, that's the it is the parliament which is having the authority to pass legislation. Not really by the executive. The ex as the executive, that's we initiate. Finally, Parliament will have to decide whether this law is good or bad, whether it is to be, uh, whether it is to be adopted yeah, or rejected. But the yeah. government in power has yeah. the no. But the government in the power has the especially this has to come through the cabinet. No, now the cabinet has agreed to pass present this law. But some of whether the it is to be passed or even not, it is even, even, with, even, even with this even with this clause you just mentioned, no, even with this yeah. clause you just mentioned, the cabinet has taken the decision to table it. Now, yourself, you accepted that there are some flaws in this bill. 
even such the cabinet no, agreed blows, to I didn't say blows but that there are criticism in some with regard to some sections that is what I said that's still I am I, that within open minds to consider but then, but then any any but then enhancement you, advancement of the law is been proposed the certainly that uh, no, but then why, why didn't you all discuss in the cabinet before it it been we uh, tabled in the, the cabinet we discussed the but then the discussions you, in the cabinet that after the cabinet agreed only no I, then, can, I can guess at it, but then, then you, I can guess at it. Yourself who tabled it to the cabinet accepts that there are some flaws. You just now accepted that there are and some that flaws. That is what said before. You not, know, that, why is not I, I, that is consensus. not the flaws. That is that they, my colleagues say is that there are a lot of flaws in this one and they should be reconsidered. That is why I said that is I am in open mind still that we can discuss there are yeah, opportunities to discuss this matter in the sectoral committee, that is the party level, in the parliamentary committee level, that the political party <coughs> level, the opposition opposition leader says tomorrow he wants, he wants to discuss with this matter. Even today I said that to Mr. Sumandira, that he wanted to have a discussion with the TAN MPs. We said the next week we will sit and discuss. One thing now, yeah. very easily you can say that this will be bringing before the parliament, they will decide. So that of course the issue in this country, what is right. this parliament? It totally loses the people's <laughs> mandate. It totally loses the social then contract. You take over the now they the only. Power and you now they now the we, are, we are criticizing. This is a, we, are, we, are, we are criticizing. Yes, this yes. is a draconian law. Now it will be bringing before parliament. With, who's violent. the majority With of this parliament? You want to have a government? No, let me. Who is the majority of this parliament, yes, including mini Dr. Rajapaksha? The people casted their vote against the. Rani Vikram Singh during that election. Now they got together, being ministers, being parliamentarian. Now they are ruling the country under him. So it doesn't transpire the people's mandate. So that is the other issue. So now if it is does not transpire, if uh, Mr. Anrokumar Adisanayake is elected as the president, still can you say that he doesn't have the mandate? If there Mr. Rani Vikram Singh, no. he said he said only one one seat in the parliament. But the, the constitutional provisions is, if there is a vacancy in the presidency, the parliamentarians shall vote it and uh, get that uh, president elected. Then just because with the, uh, Mr. Anil Vikram Singh had won one, but we told that he got 134 votes. But even if Mr. Anrakumara is elected with the majority vote, he is having only three votes. But then still, you people can the no. same argument. Still, maybe, he have. maybe you know that maybe there is there's the institution, but still, people have a right. To that is that is what you say, but the still constitution says constitution says no. that is the now, only legitimate now, way. Now, according to this you act, the they are you asking. You are shouting. You can't tell the left. According to act, it no. says regarding the sovereignty of the people. Now, according to their own democratic nature. Then the elections are the way to address this democratic issue. Now they are postponing the elections. Sovereignty cannot be, you know, that's decided the just because now, that's they are that's that to Gami won. Now it has why, to be while, while manipulating while manipulating the parliament, while manipulating the people's mandate, they are bringing draconian laws as well. So if so that we are scared for that. I am not the side of the Andhra Kumar Vadu. I am representing the public of this country. That perspective, I'm addressing. We also represent the public and we have been elected to do it. That's a problem, you are not representing the public. If decided constitutionally, then constitutionally mandated elections should be held. So this is the government that is postponing elections and saying that they are protecting the sovereignty of the people. Now that's a contradiction in terms, no? Right? So if we are going to, we can't pick and choose which parts of the constitution we want to protect that. We can't cherry pick, right? So if we are upholding the constitution, let's uphold the constitution in its entirety. Yeah, uh, well, Dr. Rajapaksha, very quickly before we go for a short commercial break and when we come back, we'll discuss more about the anti-terrorism bill. Now you spoke about uh, the constitutionality of, 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 uh, of electing a president. Then you spoke earlier before with regard to um, the uh, mandate that the people gave Gotabe Rajapaksa because he was, uh, he was talking about national security and people voted in favor of that and that is why 6.9 million people voted in favor of Kotabe Rajpaksa and that was what you described as uh, the election win of, of the then president. Then we saw the Aragalia taking place last year. Uh, there were many individuals on the streets, uh, there were people who wanted a political or a system change. They said that the social contract 
between the people and the government has diminished as such there needs to be an election and then all this happens so which then there election? was no constitutional which election i'm talking about the presidential election no, you can't go for a presidential election in terms of the constitution the president can't call for an election until the four years period is over no but huh? now we have we are talking Even about local government the president, that is the provincial situation. council elections are due local government elections are yeah, due the, with regard to the, the lo, that is the, the provincial council the election that was long uh, due long before that incident yeah now that's the with regard to the local government now there is an issue with regard to the financial aspect of it yeah but the now president said then he doesn't no, even you and i can't decide no, that led, that is before the court that's the court will allow because parties have gone before the court we i can't comment about the matters pending in courts that so even you can't do and so i should, can't do it that is sub judice should the people always go to court to call for an election yeah that they have gone that is why i said should they should should that is pending that the are we also i am also concerned i have told so many times that we also have requested the uh, the finance ministry as soon as possible but now to make some but, but uh, are you aware but, of that funds but, to the but, but are you aware dr rajbakshi that certain cabinet ministers are against this uh, Uh, bill because we, no, we heard that is wrong that is minister wrong. ali sabri went on record no, saying Mr. that no ali sabri said that is because that he also said that these powers retention powers yeah. should not be given to the digs it should retain with the minister of defense that is that is his opinion uh, that that uh, of course there are reasonable grounds for him to justify it but we did it we we agreed with this uh, the proposed bill with regard to the detention powers to the dig because throughout that the allegation was this should not be given to the politicians it must then, be taken out from politicians if it is so we can decide Rab, now whether it is to be given to the yeah. minister of defense whether it is to be given to the instead of dig the igp whether it is given to the uh, secretary of uh, the uh, secretary of the minister of defense the, those are the other options no the we can't give it to any third parties no that's those are the only people we'll have to uh, decide who is the best person uh, we going for a short commercial break we are in uh, discussion with dr vijay saraj pakshar dr harini amar surya farman kasim president council salde peris president council as well as attorney at law nuan bopage stick and stay with face nation we will be right back परिवर्तन පවතින පුළුවන්ද මේ වගේ කුඩා වෙළඳ පොළක කියන ප්‍රශ්නෙ කොත් තියෙනවා කුඩා වෙළඳ පොළකට වත්පතුත් වැඩි විද්‍යුත් මාධ්‍යයක් වෙන්න විලිත්ත සමග නිමාතය සිනසුරාදා රාත්‍රී නවයි පිහිට ශ්‍රී ලංකා සතියේ දිනවල උදෑසන 7ට Welcome back. This is Face the Nation. So we are getting a lot of questions from our viewers, and most of the questions that we are posing, uh, Minister, are from the viewers. Don't think it's our personal views, or we want to uh, have a beef with you on the show. We don't want to do that. We are very unbiased when it comes to our questions. So we have another question from our viewer. Uh, this government was voted in during an election held during COVID. People voted at great risk to elect this government, and the politicians at the time 
didn't mind risking the people's lives so that a general election was held soon. But today, the same government that was elected is denying the people the right to create a new social contract by delaying elections. The constitution is a contract with the people. It's not just a piece of paper. It is a living document. Don't use the word constitution loosely and think that the people don't understand the full meaning of that word. So as a government representative, what do you have to say? Yes, that the election was conducted during the COVID. That is correct. In terms of the constitution, the parliamentary, even uh, without election, that uh, automatically that the period will be lapsed and that's the parliament will defunct when the period uh, is not, uh, when the period is over. Now here, that the, this, the, the local government election that comes under the uh, normal laws, ordinary statutory laws. And therefore, that I, I am not here comparing that the constitution, uh, the, the, the basic law, the supreme law of the country and the other statutory laws. Anyway, that uh, with regard to the conduct of the local government election, we also concern. But there is an uh, issue where the, even the last month that when we discussed with the Treasury, their position was that within 15 days that they had to pay two salaries. The 25th, uh, the salary of the March, uh, before 10th, the salary for the month of April. And therefore, that's, it's difficult for them to find the monies. That's, we also have requested that the earliest possible opportunity provide the money to conduct the election. And that is a matter now in the courts, of course, I cannot make any comment with regard to the matters in the court, let the court to decide it. If the ministry says that we can find the money before it, that's definitely we'll have to go to election. What's the position of the SJB on this? The position of the SJB is contradictory to what the president says, that there is no election to postpone election. So that statement is enough to answer what the government and the president is thinking. He said in parliament, no other place, that there is no, no election to postpone. So what does that mean? This government... Oh, diverting from what we were discussing today. This government has no legitimacy. It's legal, illegal why I say it's also because of the statements of the president like this, you know. He's acting like a tin pot dictator, whether I like it or not, right? To come out and say, a person who's been in parliament for 40 years, leader of the largest part of the largest parties, decimated it, and then comes and says, there is no election to postpone election. I mean, what sort of a statement is that? Can a serious politician Having democratic values, come and say that. But he was grinning when he said that. He can grin or he can laugh or he can do anything, but he said that. I mean, what a what a idiotic statement to say. And and now and and president trust. statement. Yes, the president statement. Idiotic. Yes, of course. What are the words to use? I mean, come on. I mean, there are people who are watching. There are uh, the parliamentarians are there. Uh, people are watching, and then we the, the, that sets the stage, you no. Know? The whole agenda is set with that statement to come out and say there is no election to postpone. From that day we know there is, no, there is not going to be an election. Then we go to court. We went to court, the SJB, the General Secretary went to court with the election to postpone. He got an interim, obtained an interim order also. And now he's putting the Treasury Secretary into trouble. Okay, now we have felt contemplated. So how do you feel, how do you feel, Farman, when such laws are being brought in, when negotiations are taking place with international organizations, uh, this government which you are deeming as illeg illegitimate. Uh, what do you feel being an opposition uh, party member? Uh, isn't, is it fair in the eyes of the public? No, it's, it's very foolhardy. So that we, that's what we've always said to them. We've always maintained that this government is not legitimacy and don't, and don't go ahead with it. We've been asking for elections always. We've been calling out for elections. The president is man by, by constitution can call for an election. He can call for a parliamentary election if he wants to. And a presidential election, arguable whether he can call this November or not, but we say he can. So he could have called for a parliamentary election when he wanted. If he wanted to test the waters, he could have tested it with the local government elections. So it is not fair by the people, and we have said that. That is why our leader, Mr. Sajid has come out and said that this, whatever the IMF is giving, this government is taking blindly. And that is not a contract that is between uh, by and between the people uh, of this country. Farman, I saw, I, uh, last week we had uh, Iran become Ratna on the show. And um, he uh, spoke about uh, the fact that uh, they were trying to meet opposition party members uh, to form a, a unity a front in terms of battling out this anti-terrorism bill that would be tabled in parliament anytime soon. But in that list of members, the NPP was not there. Why? We had, we had 
we had uh, Udega Mampila, we had uh, Nala Gudeva, we had a uh, lot of uh, Rao Fakim, Rishad Badiuddin. We, we had a few parties, but the notable absentee from the list was the NPP. I don't know what list you're talking about, but uh, no, this, this was the recent meeting. Yeah, okay. you probably you're the legal. Yeah, I don't know what, what of the talking about from what uh, from what uh, Honourable Member Harani spoke about. Uh, definitely, they are opposing this bill. No, but but so, in so terms of forming a unity front, a unity, a unity front in the sense there is no unity front. Like it's not like election. No. It's like it's it's the unity front in the sense they will go with one some some common principles. Mm. Probably the NPP has a different principle. Or you, they will obviously. I, I I'm now speaking for. No, no, Emma, but I'm sure no, we'll ask, we'll ask Harry knows. Harry knows. Sure we all don't see eye to eye. No, I'm, I'm, sure, and the I, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're objecting. Yeah. No, we, we all don't, right? Obviously, we are, I, I, why? I, I, we are I, obviously different. two. That's why we are two different parties. Yeah. No? Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we could have But they see eye to eye with us. Who says I think I I don't think so, but <laughs> based on this discussion, of course, I didn't see anything of that uh, sort. No, so I think <laughs> we that is on only the bill, no? <laughs> but uh, but uh, no. No, so I want to know. I, uh, yes. Harinder, please. The, the, now, because the, I Dr. Rajapal says something very interesting. On the bill, you all are against, but otherwise, you all are together. Yes, because that's we are very friendly. So we, Har we have Harinder, I want to know. I, I want to know a little bit about I, that. I, I, How I, friendly are you all with the government? I, I really don't understand what the minister is talking about. As human relationships go, I don't think we have anything personal to personal against any yeah. single person in, in But in the, terms of policy, when it comes to policy, parliament, in parliament, in of course, you all policy, talk about friendship. No, uh, I don't you think all there's any speak about policy, policy so that's what we want is, also. We don't want anything yeah. related to uh, friendship I mean, in not, parliament. These are not, parli uh, these mm. are not personal agendas, right? But I can't think of any one single policy that the minister has brought forward that I have or the NPP has supported. Mm. So I think where there's a very clear policy disagreement here, where there are. Uh, no, that is true. I, I, I concede even when I brought that in January, the uh, that uh, finance and finance mm -hmm. controlling on that elections, uh, they opposed to that and they voted against it. I wanted to prevent the corruptions in the elections and they have voted, you know, uh, limit the expenditure, they voted against. With regard to the, the question that you raised about uh, the alliance that was uh, created, at this point, the decision that the NPP has taken is that we are not going to form any alliances with any, any, party. any party. We will. There have been occasions in Parliament where, as an opposition, we have acted in unity uh, when it comes to opposing certain things. Is Andrew Kumar Dasanak back from uh, Korea? He came back many me weeks ago. I am very curious as to why everybody is <laughs> so interested in his. Uh, trip to uh, South Korea and he's, he's returned. returned. Curious he's about travel. return, he's not travel. visit. Because but this is not the have, first time he has travelled out of the country. Why is this South Korean trip <laughs> causing such uh, excitement I, in the I believe he was in Europe it's before he went to Korea. Was he? Yes. Italy. Italy. He was in very many countries prior to this. He's but a, now, a regular, uh, you know, regular traveler, 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 regular traveler, traveler, yeah. regular traveler. And now you take the but people say he looks at North Korea but goes to South Korea. No, but but uh, Harman, <laughs> Harman, you can't say that. You know, at least they are traveling overseas. Yeah, yeah. All leaders sometimes is missing in action. In, he's not even in Colombo. What is he missing in action? He's not in Colombo, no. That's How can he be in Colombo? He's a leader. He's a leader of the opposition. He, 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 he travels length and breadth of the country. Uh, yeah. Not Yala, the, he, he was a former former MP for Hambantara. Obviously, he goes there, nurses the electorate there, and he nurses Yala. the whole country. Oh, right, okay. And Yala is one of the places. At least he's not murdering people and walking around. <laughs> I mean, if he was murdering people and walking around or robbing some bank or something, then that's something to talk about. Right. So, so we want to, I, I want to move to the final round. So, I want to ask uh, all uh, five, uh, four gentlemen and the lady with regard to the way forward for Sri Lanka. Uh, now there is a bill that is going to be tabled in Parliament in time soon. Minister, is there a particular date that you have in mind? No, not yet. Uh, I had decided. Still, I uh, said that still we are we are discussing the matters. Right. Uh, uh, that, has uh, the international community given the not because I know uh, Ranil Vikram Singh is very much uh, uh, an individual who speaks to the international community because right now we need their support as well in terms of GSP, in terms of FDIs and all that. Uh, so, have you all had a dialogue with the EU or the US or the Western world or India or, 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 or yeah, on this Yeah, I in question? fact that uh, Foreign Minister had discussed separately whenever that they meet that uh, diplomats and uh, other representatives. Yeah, in in my case that I made the uh, embassy, the US embassy, the uh, South Korean uh, High Commissioner, then some representatives of the European Union. 
and they, and they also located. draw the attention about this that uh, the detention orders by the by a DIG okay. and the interpretation they, they they said that they also have the view that those two matters uh, should be reconsidered by us and, and what did you tell them I said certainly we are we will do that we will we will discuss with all the stakeholders we will discuss with the political parties we will discuss with that even I had a meeting with OPA two days ago uh, there was a very good interaction then we will have in a similar way not only the BSL but the GMO and other trade union as we but discussed the 21st amendment with more than 100 organizations uh, so Dr. we will do it yeah, before we go to the final uh, round uh, if you look at the if you look at the bill in in question in totality, there were a lot of things that were discussed by the government. We spoke we spoke about a rehabilitation act. Then we spoke about uh, uh, the government spoke about uh, bringing forth regulations to um, um, to manipulate or or at least uh, control social media. Uh, all these were discussed and debated upon. It seems that all these aspects have been brought in surreptitiously on this bill in question. No, you saw that the Rehabilitation Act, in fact, that has been, uh, that drafting process had been started more than 15, 16 years ago. And there had been certain, you know, insertion into the uh, bill just after the, 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 that is after the Easter Sunday attack, whereas that it had been the intention, where my predecessor, Mr. Ali Sabri, was the minister. Uh, during that period, certain provisions had been inserted uh, with the intention that uh, those who have got involved in that uh, some activities like in the Easter Sunday attack, youngsters who had been misled, the without going through legal process just to have some uh, rehabilitation and to, uh, to make them good citizens. That had been the idea, very frankly. During that period, there was no argale or anything. But when the people started opposing for those provisions that I categorically said, we don't want to capture any of those categories that we will confine to drug addicts. And there should be the, the Supreme Court also, the, at the first instance itself, that we inform, that in general inform that we will confine it to the uh, drug addicts. But it, the, even uh, the, 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 as you said, that they opposed to that, they voted against even rehabilitation of youngsters. And because there is already an opposed. existing, am I not correct, that there is already an existing bill for rehabilitation, so we did not see the purpose no, for another... No, there is no bill, that was a, so bill. a administrative, drug. no, that, that is an administrative arrangement that happened, that started during the Chantrika um, Bandaranaika's period. They, she opened that one, you may recall that Chittavella uh, was uh, mm. the chairman at that time. Yeah. It was an administrative arrangement, there was no legal mechanism mm. and there was, no, there was no legal protection. And that is why we wanted to take that is out of the uh, army control and just to have the basically uh, the psychiatric doctors to take charge of it. That, that was not what was in the bill, Minister. No, that is, you, you show me a single thing to contradict the, my statement here. There, there is, is nothing other than that. That was Only one for of the, the criticisms and we had of the Savi, field, the, the absence other thing of is mental some health experts. Parents are there, they come and tell, they tell us, even I know, <coughs> personally, that as it was, you will have to go through the court process. It, unless the direction of a court, the we can't accept. Hmm. Uh, people, it, it's a stigma people, people consider it as. And now, voluntarily, if they say that we want that this child to be rehabilitated, that we can do it. Right. Don't, right. You, don't, don't you think that is good for the, that, uh, the people in the society? If I, if I express my opinion, uh, you won't get hurt, right? Uh, uh, no, Dr. that I, know, I never get hurt right. for any, any, any. You would, you would, you, you would, make, you would call me ridiculous by, uh, <laughs> when I express my view. Yeah, that is but let, let the people decide, let the people decide. Is anyway, that, let that let is the people true. decide, uh, uh, Dr. Rajpaksha, on that. So we're going for a quick commercial break. When we come back, I want to give an equal opportunity for the four speakers on to my right. But I'm going to give extra time to Dr. Vijayas Rajpaksha because he's only uh, on the... Uh, I'm alone. Uh, I'm alone, just got alone. <laughs> Sure. So At I will give you, you some extra time. So, <laughs> 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 if your policies were right, uh, not only me, uh, Dr. Vijayas Rajapaksha, the entire country will stand with you. Unfortunately, 
that's not the case. So we like go for a short commercial but break. But in 21st Amendment, the whole country stood with me, oh, despite all the obstacles from uh, <laughs> either side. Let, let's go for a short commercial break. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're discussing on the anti-terrorism bill uh, that would be tabled in Parliament anytime soon. There is no set date yet. Uh, we're going for a short commercial break. Stay connected, stay with Face Nation. We will be right back. take right decision and please support me. Those people who are behind this and who are trying to hide behind power and authority should know that the Catholic Church will continue in history. We thought that it was important as we turned 62 this year, Amnesty International, to be best here and to speak with South Asians in general, with Sri Lankans in particular, as we launch this important uh, document. Good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. Newsline, Monday to Friday at 8.30 p.m. on TV1. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is Face Nation. We start off the final round with the turn yet long one vote for the Frontline Socialist Party. Yeah, uh, at the conclusion, I, all what I have to say, this is not a spontaneous piece of legis legislation. It is a reflection of the policy of this running Rajapaksha Kaum. It is very clear. Now, when you go through one by one of these sections, it is not an innocent move, it is not a not to assure, give assurance against the uh, terrorism in this country. So, therefore, it is very clear what is the conduct of this government. Subject to that only, we have to interpret this. Out of the context, we can't talk about that. Now, from the very beginning, what this Ranil Vikram Singh did, he blatantly attacked the Aragale, which demanded a proper, transparent new system. He blatantly attacked. Then thereafter, he actually blamed Bar Association. He specifically mentioned the name of his president, former president. At the same time, now they are going to bring judges before the privilege committees. So this is the conduct of this government. At the same time, now they are going to implement IMF conditions, which has not been divulged yet, which totally against the social welfare and the, against the public. Mm. So in the, under, under this context only, they are bringing this, suddenly bringing this act. So therefore, the main artist of this act is, I am 100% sure there is no hesitation, the Ranil Vikram Singh, the present president. Therefore. When uh, we asked several questions from the Dr. Rajapaksha regarding certain sections, but always now there is no fat, fat, fraternity regarding this particular act. Now, uh, according to him, a committee only drafted this. Now, at the same time, uh, when we asking about these particular things, Minister says, no, Parliament will fi finally decide. Then he said, now it is open, everybody to talk about that. But that is not the reality. Now there is a piece of legislation more draconian than the previous PTA and it is anti-democratic. At the same time, there is the tyranny and the, uh, it curtails the fundamental rights of the people. So they are, that is why we are opposing that. So all the political part, most of the political parties and human rights activists, all are raising issues against this. At the same time, it is not a replacement of the PTA Actually, it is an enhancement of the PTA and uh, violation of basic rights of the people. Therefore, in these circumstances, we have to somehow defeat that. What is the message given by the Aragalaya? Power is with the people, 
not from not in other institutions. Therefore, the people have to take into consideration about this draconian law. They have to come forward and somehow fight to defeat this. Otherwise, like PTA, another four, three generation will be suffered. They will be the victims. So we have to somehow re reverse this particular move of the government. Therefore, okay. all I invite the people to come forward and fight to reverse this particular draconian thank law. You, thank you very much, Attorney Adlaw. And one go okay, I now move to Sali Pavis, President's Council, former President of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka. Yeah, so I, I say we have to look at this bill in the backdrop of past abuse of the PTA. The fact that the police in Sri Lanka lacks independence, absolute lack of independence, heavy politicization, uh, where even the Inspector General of Police is bows down to the political authorities. And we have to also look at it in the background of concerted attack on independent institutions in this country. We know that the Elections Commission, the Human Rights Commission has been uh, the target of, uh, of their independence is being attacked. And we see willful disobeying of court orders. Willful disobeying of court orders and also an attempt to stifle the independence of the judiciary. And we, we saw when, when judges have given orders, there is disobeying of those orders. And not only disobeying, uh, a way, an attempt to intimidate the judiciary by the use of uh, uh, privileges and immunities. So it is in this backdrop we have to understand the dangers of the anti-terrorism bill. And most certainly, I, it is my view that this bill must be withdrawn and we must go back to the drawing boards and come up with a bill which is acceptable to the stakeholders. PTA has to be repealed, but this is not the way to go. Thank you very much, uh, Sali Paris, President's Council. I now move my attention towards uh, Dr. Harin Amarsuri, Member of Parliament, representing the NPP. Uh, we have always stood for the repeal of the PTA. We've certainly not asked for the PTA to be replaced by something worse than uh, what is in existence. Uh, as I said earlier, we need a, if this kind of legislation is to be proposed, then there needs to be a justification for the need for such a law. And the, and the uh, minister and the government have failed to provide adequate justification for such a law to come into being. Uh, the only reason that we see for that, that is why you have to take the intent behind the law. Uh, whatever the minister may say, the intent behind the law is, is not justifiable, is not innocent. Uh, this, law, this is being proposed at a time where the, where the political establishment of this country was challenged as never before. And every action since Ranil Vikramasinghe came into power uh, went into ensuring that such a challenge would never take place again. So this piece of legislation, in our view, is a continuation of that attack against the people of this country. Today, it is the people of this country who are seen as public enemy number one for this government. It's the people of this country who are being categorized as terrorists by the president and by the government. And this piece of legislation, far from protecting the people or anything to do with national security or public security, is about extending the executive power of the president in order to crush whatever uh, uh, challenges or dissent that is existing and will, will continue to uh, exist. Uh, especially against this uh, government and its current actions. Also, what is particularly dangerous is that this is coming at a time when the government is also denying people the right to exercise their franchise. So constitutional guarantees for exercising their franchise is also being denied. And through this legislation, what the government is proposing to do is to deny their constitutionally guaranteed, guaranteed rights to express themselves, freedom of expression, freedom of opinion, freedom of organizing, all of these constitutionally mandated rights are being curtailed by this piece of legislation and uh, also I think it's highly irresponsible for a government uh, to come up with this kind of legislation and then say, well now we are open for discussion, you can give your comments and we are willing to accommodate. That's, that's not how, I don't think that's the way you, you should go about 
uh, bringing in uh, uh, legal reforms in this country. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hari Damasuri, Member of Parliament. Uh, I now move my attention towards uh, Farman Kasim, President's Council, Legal Secretary of the SJB. Now the PPA has been in existence since 1979. It didn't stop a 30-year war. It didn't stop the insurrection in 88, 89, or 87. It didn't stop the Easter carnage. So, it, if it did not stop uh, all these, then the biggest allegation against the, or the biggest drawback of the PTA was the abuse of the power. Abuse of power. I mean, during the 30-year wars, the powers were abused. During the 88, 89 insurrection, also the PTA powers were abused, and after the Easter bombings, also were abused. Now, in that, in back that, in that backdrop. You don't, it's, it's kindergarten stuff to understand that all these powers were abused because there was no judicial intervention. That's why I keep on saying, when there's no judicial intervention, judicial supervision, who decides? Oh. So, we are coming back to square one all over again. I didn't, I didn't talk about the intentions and, uh, of the act because there will be now the, it has been gazetted. Right? Legally, there's nothing else we can do. So, what we can only hope and pray is that we can emphasize in, in the Supreme Court as well as in committee stage that we put in certain judicial interventions in this act. Where the, the, here, uh, we have now gone further from the minister to the police. 30 police officers can issue detention orders which cannot be challenged. You cannot challenge it. Right? So, that, uh, that right has been now expanded and the right of judicial intervention, I say purposely, has been left out. Definitely, because that, that, is the, that is the most fundamental fact in the whole, uh, whole discussion of the PTA. If, if, you, if, uh, if, uh, if one was honest, if one was honourable, you would say that this, this, whatever action you take under this particular act can be, can be justiciable. We can always argue that under section 102 we can file an FR and then go and argue, but we will have to create laws there. I mean, for 40 years, we are still not sure whether the uh, uh, PT detention order can be canvassed in the Supreme Court or not. We still go and argue that mm. for every particular case. So, we want to argue another 40 years uh, on, on section 102 of this particular bill. Mm. No. It would it, it, be very easy and very fair if from the date of detention, if right. judicial intervention and judicial supervision can be ingrained in the act. That is all what the SJP at this moment is our stance is that because now the intentions and all purposes all that has passed now and is being gazetted therefore our stance is simply that there has to be judicial intervention even at this late stage thank you very much uh, farban kasim president's council legal secretary of the sjb dr vidya saraj paksha minister of justice prisons reforms and constitutional reforms uh, in the first place that uh, when we say even while having pta that they could not uh, prevent that uh, or resist the LTT war is not correct. If this law was not applicable, it would have gone for not 30 years, 50 years or 60 years. <coughs> Therefore, that argument is not valid. Even, even that the Easter Sunday attack, no doubt that they could not uh, prevent it. But the further chaotic situation or further bloodbath in many parts of the country were prevented by applying this law, whatever the government that prevail. On the other hand, that IMF, uh, this IMF issue, we, when we started the drafting in 2015, we never knew that we have to go to IMF in 2022. And that, in fact, that IMF has not imposed any condition that we must bring that, but they certainly insisted that they are concerned about the stringent provisions of the existing PTA, that they, they insisted that it's better that is to be changed. And on the IMF issue, that the SJB, the main opposition, that, that always that uh, they were with, the, with it. They, from the beginning, they said, in fact, that the government, then government delayed it. That opposition was insisting you must go to IMF. But then the, then the ministers did not comply with that one. Therefore, we could have avoided uh, some of the economic crisis if they had gone to the IMF in time, rightly or wrongly. Sixteen times that we have taken the assistance from the IMF, that's the we have failed to, you know, the, the deliver the fruits. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, this the intimidation of judges by the government, I think that is not correct. The, even uh, Dr. Arini is a member of that. You were there today, no? Uh, some, one of the MPs has raised a privilege issue. Now that has been referred to the committee where we, uh, both of us are members. The privileges committee, that the privileges committee will decide. That is not an action of the government. The action of a member, now it has come to the committee where that's the committee is represented all parties. 
Every every party is represented there. You really expect us to believe that? Oh. For an no, you need not. I don't want anybody to believe. I don't want anybody to believe. But the fact remains. Anybody can't deny the fact. It is by one MP, <laughs> and the committee is consisting of members representing each and every political party in the parliament, including Dr. Harry. That's we we will we will have to take a decision whether that we can do it whether the parliament has the power or not. We will have to take a decision that tomorrow uh, we are meeting. And the other thing is that the judicial there are cases. I mean you know that uh, if you have to depending on the offence insert under certain acts, the magistrate can't grant uh, bail if it is a larger quantity of uh, drugs. Uh, dangerous drug, then you will have to go to the High Court or Court of Appeal. Like in Antiquities Ordinance, that the bail, bail you will have to obtain from the uh, Court of Appeal only, not by the Magistrate Court or High Court. Here, that uh, j that is because they raise it about the judicial intervention. Even when a DIG makes an order that you can't challenge in the Magistrate Court and you cannot ask the bail, or oh, that's the even before the High Court. But still, that the Constitution has made provisions. You can challenge it either by your jurisdiction or fundamental jurisdiction in the Supreme Court. The both courts are having the powers. But certainly, that uh, the, with the past experience, I can see hmm. sufficient safeguards have to be made. That is just to prevent the abuse. Otherwise, what will happen? Hmm. The so-called they say that's the. That, the most dangerous draconian law, the PTA, will remain. Seems like it, Dr. Vyasa. Yes, what clarification about the IMF? The SJB raised about the IMF because of the disastrous consequences of what President Gotabe Rajapaksa did to the country. That is why we said you have to go to the IMF. If he didn't do those disastrous consequences, we won't have to go to the IMF. So so once he ruined the country and brought it down to his knees, then we said now go to the IMF. Not that we love the IMF and want to go to the IMF. I, that, I need to give, yeah, there. But I need to give an opportunity to Dr. Vijas Rajapaksa to respond to that. No, yes. That is, of course, that uh, Parman, you know, we accepted this government when there was nobody to take it over. No? I myself, you know, that the pleaded with the opposition group and the opposition leader, please take it over. We didn't want any oppos any position or uh, any privilege or whatever. We didn't want to be a part of the government even. We said 53 members, we are together. We are giving unconditional support. Please take over the government. Then finally, when they said that, they, 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 they refused it, I said, we said, okay, that we will take four, five uh, portfolios, not because we want portfolios, just to show that we are all together with you. You have 48, we have 53. Then when they refused, the Samir, what else can we do? We, we did a sacrifice. These are all just nice stories. Let them, no, let not let nice stories. Story. No, these, the these are nice stories. So that you don't believe that? No, 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 don't you no, believe that? We we'll have to argue about this until the cows go home. So let's, <laughs> yeah. let's stop it at that. That's so thank you very much, Dr. Vijay Raj Paksha, for thank joining you, us this you. evening um, on the show. Uh, Farman Khasim, President's Council, Dr. Harin Amar Surya, uh, Sali Piris, President's Council. Sali, this was your first time on the show, right? Yeah, for some Sounds okay, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and attorney at law, Anwan Bopage, for joining us this evening on the show. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I know uh, all of you are very busy, uh, gentlemen, and the lady, and uh, making time despite your demanding schedule is really appreciated. And I hope and pray, Dr. Vijay Raj Paksa, when we invited you the next time, also you'll come on the show um, uh, for the sake of the <laughs> channel and not me. <laughs> thank you very much. Nidreshan, thank you very much, uh, Attorney at Law Ravind, for joining us this evening on the show. I leave you tonight with a quote, as I always do. Uh, patriotism means to stand with the country. It does not mean in any way to stand with the president. Take care and good night.